the <coughs> Charter Township of Oxford Board of Trustees regular meeting Wednesday, April 12th, 2023 at Lake Point Church, 1550 West Drainer Road. Uh, uh, I'd like to have everybody stand. Gentlemen, remove your hats, and we will pay respects to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, noting of the roll. Clerk Wright. Here. Trustee Knoll. Here. Treasurer Ferrari. Here. Trustee Colvin. Here. Trustee Charles. Here. Supervisor Curtis. Here. Trustee Payne is absent. Okay, uh, item four, approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll second that. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Charles. Are there any questions? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Item five, approval of the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Colvin. Are there any questions on the consent agenda? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Motion carries. Item six, public comment on items not on the agenda. Are there any comments to be made tonight on items not on the agenda? Seeing none, number seven. 7A, public hearings. 7A, to consider the establishment of a special assessment district to eradicate and control aquatic leads in Paint Lake Canal. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing at 6.32 p.m. to discuss the establishment of the Paint Lake Special Assessment District to your objections to the SAD petition the SAD project and the SAD cost estimate. I'll support that. Okay, I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Charles. Any questions? Roll call, please. Clerk Wright, yes. Treasurer Ferrari, yes. Supervisor Curtis, yes. Trustee Nold, yes. Trustee Colvin, yes. And Trustee Charles, yes. Okay, we have an open floor public hearing to consider the establishment of the Special Assessment District for to eradicate and control aquatic weeds in Paint Lake Canal. Is there anybody that would like to speak on that agenda item? Seeing none, I look for a motion. I move to close the public hearing, discuss the establishment of the Paint Lake Special Assessment District, to your objections to the SAD petition, the SAD project, and the SAD cost estimate at 6.33 p.m. Second the motion. Okay, I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Clerk Wright. Roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Trustee Knoll. Yes. Okay, item 7B, to consider the possibility of utilizing one company to provide waste disposal services to the Charter Township of Oxford. And ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, I'm going to clear my throat. I'm going to read a statement. The next item on our agenda is consideration of utilizing one company to provide waste disposal services to the Charter Township of Oxford. In preparation for this discussion and public hearing with our residents at our public meeting on January 11th of this year, the Township Board authorized a request for a proposal for solid waste recycling and yard waste collection, transportation and disposal services. While recently the township received responses to the RFP, 
the acceptance of any bid contract was and has always been conditioned upon the township board considering and approving a new waste disposal ordinance, which tonight's public hearing was intended to discuss and obtain input from our residents. Unfortunately, I learned that a contractor of the township may have had contact with some, but not all, potential bidders during the RFP process. While there is no evidence confidential information was exchanged or other improprieties occurred, it has always been my practice that Oxford Township will not only adhere to the strict language of our procurement policy, but will also avoid even the appearance of impropriety or unfair treatment. For this reason, I'm exercising the township's right to reject any and all proposals under the RFP and thereby terminate the previously approved RFP. I am requesting this board refer the matter back to the Waste Disposal Ordinance Subcommittee with the direction to consider a request for proposal specifying that all township employees, contractors, and representative strictly adhere to the Oxford Township procurement policy in a manner consistent with fairness and transparency to all interested parties and avoid at all times the even appearance of impropriety. And I'd like to have this motion read in, if you so would, please. Should we do the public hearing first? Uh, no. I move to direct the Waste Disposal Ordinance Subcommittee consider a request for proposal for solid waste recycling yard collection, transportation disposal services, which specifies that all township employees, contractors, and representatives strictly adhere to the Oxford Township procurement policy and matter consistent with fairness and transparency to all interested parties and avoid at all times even the appearance of impropriety. Second. The motion by Treasurer Ferrari is second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions from the board? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Nold. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, what I've done is I've stopped all any actions on anything that went out uh, through our procurement policy that was not adhered to. Tonight was a scheduled public hearing for <clears throat> you to come in and give us information about how you felt about trash haulers that serve you, trash haulers that work in our community, and you heard my statement that that policy was not adhered to, and um, community, I'm gonna use their name, because Paul's here, um, voiced his opinion that there was some uh, inappropriate things that went on, and I'm here to tell you, it came to me and we stopped it. So, what I'm gonna do, Thank you. What, what I'm going to do, though, is I am going to open, like we suggested, on January 11th of this year at our township board meeting, a public hearing. When we open the public hearing, anybody that would like to stand up and talk, I'll give you three minutes to address the board. I'm the board. You address me. If we have a question that we need to be answered, we have our attorney on the end, Dan Kelly. We have members of the waste um, uh, disposal Service Subcommittee here on the board, and you have me to answer any questions. Uh, <clears throat> I will give you each three minutes to speak. Hopefully you're not all going to stand up and say the same thing over and over, or you won't get a chance to visit the sunshine that's left tonight. We do want to hear your comments. We will not move forward without them. We have taken written comments. We have taken let, uh, email comments and telephone comments to heart, and that's why we are where we are tonight. So I look for a motion. I move to open the public hearing at 6.40 p.m. to consider contracting with one company 
to provide waste disposal services to the Charter Township of Oxford. I'll support that. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Charles. Roll call, please. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Trustee Charles. Yes. Motion carries to open the public hearing at 640. Yes, sir. I'm going to take <clears throat> one at a time. Uh, just stand up to the mic. You want to tell me who you are? You want to tell me where you live? That's great. But speak your piece and let me know. Hi, my name is Eric Benninger, and I'm the president of the Bluffs of Waterstone Is there, it says on, mic on. Check, yep, there, there we go. Yeah, it is. Okay, I'll, I'll repeat it. My name is Eric Benninger. I'm the president of the Bluffs of Waterstone HOA. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. Um, this seems pretty simple to me, um, what we pay versus what uh, another contractor would do. If it's less, we would want to do it. If it's more, we wouldn't want to do it. We're currently with Consolidated, um, and so we have 60, 60, uh oh, we have 61 homes that are currently serviced by Consolidated, and check, 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 Sorry. that are currently serviced now. So uh, the only question, so from a cost standpoint, it seems pretty straightforward. The only question I would have is, is um, we're currently contracted through to the end of the year. I would assume that um, that. Per each, we, I'm sure there are more HOAs like this in the in the area in the community that have contracts that will expire on a certain day. I would assume that you could, we could do some kind of thing where our when our contract runs out, then the city would take over, uh, versus uh, pushing a whole lot of money around. It would we would have to, you know, you, you know where I'm going with this. I understand. <clears throat> That's uh, all. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Um, that comment. And I don't know if you heard all of it. The HOA is under contract. They don't want to be billed twice. They want a fair price. That's what I took out of that, correct? Yep. Okay. We, we are taking copious notes. We have a film. We're going to answer all these questions when we can. And if each one, I may direct it to an attorney or to uh, a member. Okay, thank you. Young lady. Hi, I'm Kathy Graham. I live on Minnetonka Drive in the township. First, I want to say thanks for all that you guys do and the time you put into doing this. I'm not necessarily opposed to one contractor for the township for the pickup. I am concerned with the process and how, you know, what companies are being chosen. I think 70 pages is a little ridiculous for an RFP. It's pretty involved. Um, I wanted to tell you about my experience because after odd jobs, I went to GFL. Uh, they continuously raise their prices. I recently switched to community and it's half the cost of GFL. So, <clears throat> and it's honestly better service. I had a Thank nightmare you. with GFL where they turned me over to a credit collection agency for a bill after I see service with them. So far it's been four phone calls to try to get it corrected. I'm still getting bills. So I really have an issue with these giant companies that don't have ties to the community. So I would hope that you guys would include community disposal um, in the bid process when it does go out. They've been great service. They have more humans on their trucks. They take better care of my garbage cans. And instead of $140 every quarter, it's 75. So Thank thanks you. for your time. Okay, um, let's go down here, young lady. Shelby, I think your name is. Yes. So uh, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Shelby Stewart Solden. My husband Kyle and I live in Oxford Woods subdivision. Um, I previously emailed the board, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Um, but I did have some other additional concerns. Um, one of which is lack of transparency with the whole RFP process. Um, I am a reporter for a neighboring community, and when they were looking at this kind of thing, um, Ortonville sent out a survey to all residents to see if they even wanted a single waste hauler or not. Um, and it was about 
So what they went to, and I've included the ordinance in a packet that I gave to Clerk Wright, um, they have a single day waste hauler. So there are three that operate in the village and they can only pick up on Mondays. So that cuts down on noise and blight within the village. Um, I've expressed my concerns about a potential hauler. Um, by having a single hauler, you're taking away a lot of homeowners' options for shopping around. You know, if you're displeased with your waste hauler, you right now have the option to pay somebody else. And if you go to a single hauler, we don't have that option anymore, um, which I don't think is fair. I have also had experiences with GFL when I lived in the village of Oxford. Houses were routinely and are still routinely skipped, um, and there was garbage everywhere. I lived in Oxford Lake subdivision. There was trash all over the place. Um, but they had no choice, because what could they do but call and complain? Um, so following that, if members of the board are displeased with their trash haulers, shop around. You know, There's a lot of other really reputable companies out there, um, and some of whom, like community that we use, are local. Um, I've also heard that safety is an issue. Um, I have never had a trash hauler, any of them, almost hit me when I'm walking my dogs. Regular drivers, not paying attention, they always almost hit me. <laughs> um, and, you know, I live in a subdivision with no sidewalks, and it doesn't get plowed when it snows for a full day. That's more dangerous than a garbage truck. Um, so in conclusion, all the issues that you guys have are legitimate concerns, safety, you know, noise, blight, <clears throat> wear and tear on the roads, those all have different solutions that aren't all going to be solved by going to a single waste hauler. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. Uh, let me go back to the middle. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Curtis. I appreciate the time. I don't know if I'm close enough, far enough. A little enough. closer. Closer? There you go. How about I take this thing out? There you go. Right there. <laughs> All right, uh, my name's James Montgomery. I appreciate the opportunity to address the board tonight. And, uh, you know, I know your job is a tough job. I know you get a lot of static from a lot of people. And, you know, I've shared a very short but heartfelt email with you already. So I won't go into too much stuff. I, li uh, I live in Lake Ridge Community, Waterstone, and I use community uh, trash haulers. I've been extremely pleased with them. I would be very upset if they didn't get a fair shake at this. And, uh, you know, I know they're a, a local, a small organization, but, you know, give them a chance to upsize, give them a chance to fight for this thing. The, uh, the problem with multiple, the problem with not having multiple trash haulers is that you don't have any choice, and if one of them decides to go on strike, they have, a, they have a labor issue, you end up with trash stacked up for weeks. There are many cities in the United States that use a single trash hauler, and they, some of them are always in, in major problems waiting for the trash haulers to come by and pick up. I don't want that to happen to our community. We have too nice a community for it. So anyway, I, uh, I'll close my uh, comments with the, f the feeling that we need to have multiple choices. We, as citizens, need to make those choices, not you as a board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shelby. Uh, which way is it going? This way. Uh, good evening. Thank you for letting me speak. I'm Ed Strelecki. I live in Butterfield Acres over next to the Township Park. Um, I've managed my trash for over 30 years um, <clears throat> at the best cost and, and the best service that I can get. Um, I won't repeat all the safety concerns and uh, everything else that everybody else has already identified that was printed in the paper. Uh, I thought that was disingenuous uh, by the people that were stating that. Um, we have you know, county targets for road values of how much needs to be hauled and how much trucks need to weigh. And to say that it's a safety issue, I thought that that was just disingenuous by the people that had used that in the paper, uh, kind of fear mongering. So um, when it comes to transparency, I'd like to see how much we spent to do this study. And that includes lawyer cost. And that includes 
uh, the people we hired. Come on, guys and gals, let's, let's let them finish, please. It's rather rude to interrupt them. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Continue. I'd like to see that transparently uh, published, uh, either uh, in a, a slip that we can pick up at the township hall or somewhere that's available, maybe email it out to everybody so we can see what we spent on this study. Um, it, it's overwhelmingly seeing that everybody's here for the garbage discussion tonight, and it's a tough deal for you guys. But um, we think with all the overreaching we see everywhere else in the country, uh, we feel that there's overreaching going on here. So that, those are my thoughts. I uh, hope you take them into consideration if you start the next study up again. And I would suggest that if we have a problem with garbage trucks, we should look at then maybe doing something as simple as make garbage pick up in the middle of the night. Thank you. I'm going to recognize the gentleman on the right. My hello, right. hello, Mr. Curtis and the board. My name is Ed Zach. I live in Gulf Highlands. Uh, thank you for having this hearing today. A uh, couple of comments, and I, I guess I have, first I have a question. How many homes are we looking to single source this uh, contract to? John, can you answer that? 8,172 according to the 2020 census. So over 8,000 homes. I. I, I would ask the board to consider perhaps that, you know, having, uh, maintaining still a competitive environment. I'm all for reducing the number of trucks running through a neighborhood. I mean, we switched to a uh, community when odd jobs uh, went belly up and they stepped right up and we've been very happy ever since. Some of the neighbors had some other companies that they've now switched over to a community. I'm thinking maybe perhaps might be wise uh, is that the homeowners associations maybe uh, have some petition and so at least we can find out who in the community is using what. Uh, I can say I didn't actually do a survey yet, but in, in Gulf Highlands, the majority of the homes are with community. Uh, but single sourcing, um, like some of the other residents have, have pointed out, if someone gets in trouble or they have a labor issue or what have you, we don't have any other source, any, any other options. At least the city could have one of the other um, uh, service providers, you know, step in in situations like that. So 8,000 homes, I don't know how many um, currently like community handles or what have you, but anybody who gets a single source contract, I'm sure going to have to step up trucks, step up employment, what have you. And now you get put, the, the, put us in a, a situation where even if you went out and rebid this a few years from now, probably the other players wouldn't be in a position to, uh, you know, to, to be able to address it. So what I'm asking is reach out to the Homeowners Association, have a survey, consider having um, you know, multiple service. I don't know if you can split the city up in four quadrants or something of that nature. And... Um, I think that's about all I wanted to to, uh, to add to this. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Go to the middle. I think, yeah, middle. Hi, my name is John McNeilis. I live on Glassby Road. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make a request, if possible, that you would include an opt-out for community residents within the RFP, and I assume that you could level a minimum number of residents to award a contract and then uh, allow residents to opt out. And if there weren't enough residents that uh, wanted to opt in, then, then the program would be dismantled or, or uh, paused. But there's certainly room in, uh, in any contract for individual opt-outs with a minimum number. So, and, and I think what we've heard so far, and there may be others, is that there are many people who think they could negotiate a deal that would be more beneficial or tailored to their individual needs. Thank you. Sir. Yes, uh, my name's Fred Dick, and I live in the Willow Lake subdivision 
And I have a little bit different experience. Uh, I have priority, very dissatisfied with those people. Um, and it seems like I can't get a phone call back from any of the other people I've gotten a hold of. And I've lived there for two years. I came from a community that went through the same process you're going through. They ended up with a single trash hauler. And just very pleased with them. Uh, the prices are negotiated through the township. It's not like we have to all negotiate it. And they can't raise up uh, this gas fee that they always do. Um, so I'm all in favor uh, of a one trash hauler community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over here. Good, good evening. Uh, thanks for hearing us out here uh, today. Uh, my name's Kevin Robertson. I've been here in, over on Harwood Drive since 1991, and I've seen a lot of uh, trash haulers come and go. Um, I have uh, some questions uh, that I haven't seen any answers to. Uh, this <clears throat> seems to be a, a solution in search of a problem because I don't know what's not working at, at, at the current status quo. And number two is who's going to do the billing? Is a township going to do the billing? Would the individual hauler do the billing? Uh, my experience in Rochester Hills was when they did, when the government did the billing, uh, it, 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 it creeped up. They added two or three dollars to every cycle because, you know, they have to get paid for their paperwork. You had no say. And when I sold that house, I was still getting billed by the city. Community uh, Disposal Service has done a fine job when an uh, odd job went down. They're out there in sub-zero weather, wind chill, you know, that nobody here would want to be out in. They're out there in the rain. And I received this letter about, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago or so. And they have about 2,000 homes here in the area, but they were never invited to the party for this uh, RFP. And uh, that's like 25% of the township. So even if CDS was the provider, I would still be opposed to the idea of a monopoly handling something that should be an individual uh, matter. Uh, monopolies work in some circumstances, utilities perhaps, but I don't, uh, I don't see this as one of those circumstances that apply. I can, I can try and address part of your question. We took the RFP that community was not included on and we took that and threw it away. Now, community handles 25% of the community. Right. There are 75% of the people that aren't in this room. I haven't heard anybody stand up and say, I want this or I want that. But 75% of the people have asked us, look at what we're getting. Look what we're doing. Some streets have four haulers on them. Some streets, my street has three. So, and that's down, one left. So, with three haulers, you have six trucks on your street every week. Very fortunate. Some people don't want strict homeowners associations. So, they came to us and asked us. They've been doing this since 1989. 89. It comes up about every eight to ten years where residents are tired of having five trucks on their street. That's why, we, that's why it's here. Who's going to do the billing? That's all in the RFP to be determined. It can be done by the hauler themselves, or it can be done by the township. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Middle. Thank you. First off, thank you for everything that you do. My name is Brian Jenks. I am president of the Gulf Highlands Homeowners Association and I also sit on the Waterstone Master Association. We talk frequently, Brian. Yes, we do, Jack. <laughs> approximately, that is approximately 1,300 homes in Waterstone, or 16.25% of the coverage area that we're discussing. 90% of our residents use community disposal and are completely satisfied with their service. To verify this, I emailed and posted on the Gulf Islands Facebook page and asked the question of our residents overwhelming majority were satisfied with community disposal and have no interest in changing to another vendor, particularly if they are forced to do so. I'm happy to email you the results if you wish. Several of the communities within Waterstone have negotiated very favorable rates and terms with community, not looking to change to an unknown company. In fact, of the three bidders, which are no longer bidders, 
Priority waste management have a one out of five rating on the Better Business Bureau site. Other sources like Google Reviews, Yelp, and Trustpilot, they have anywhere from a one to a 2.2 rating out of five. Put our satisfaction in context, several years ago, on a hot Monday morning, we found out that odd jobs went out of business. Myself and others in various Waterstone HOA boards took quick action. That morning, I placed calls and explained to each company there were potentially 1,300 homes in play for their services. The three I called were community disposal, waste management, and GFL. By Monday afternoon, community disposal had called back and offered to do the garbage collection the next day at no charge. It was Thursday when GFL called back and waste management never called back. After community picked up the garbage again, I reached out and offered to pay them again. Their response was, we're looking to build a relationship here. It's on us, don't worry about it. Reliable customer service located within our community, 360 plus days a year, is why we are satisfied with them. I have in the past talked to Jack many times and offered the contact information for everyone in our HOA's board and have offered to assist in any way that we can to help communicate and get the message out there. Our community will continue to thrive with the cooperation and communication between the residents and local government. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. <laughs> Young lady. First of all, thank you all for what you do. It is not an easy job. Uh, I have sat on boards in the past. I know how much flack you got. Um, now that the niceties are out of the way, I'm a little guy. I live on Baldwin. My name is Julie Mays. I've been here for 25 years. I live on Baldwin. I do not belong to an HOA. I am not in the village. There's a reason for that. I like to make my own decisions. When odd jobs went down, I called Community Disposal, among other carriers, and as has been stated, no one else called me back. Community not only called me back, their office staff came out with a pickup truck to pick up excess garbage, a few bags a household up and down Baldwin where it turns to dirt, you know that icky part. They came out with a pickup truck at no charge, their office staff to pick up trash. January, a couple of years ago, I had a basement flood. I needed a dumpster. I called Community. Community brought a dumpster out. Supposed to be for three days. Called him at the end of three days. Hey, it's been icy and snowy. I'm trying to drag wet stuff out of my basement. Don't worry about it. Keep it as long as you need it. They have been exemplary. I, as I said, I live out in the country. Animals get into my trash. I get a phone call. They'll call me on my cell phone. Hey, the guys picked it up. Just want to let you know the top of your can's broken. We can drop off a bin. What do you need? They're there every step of the way. As I said, I've been out here for 25 years. When I moved in, I was absolutely horrified to find out my only option for cable service was with, what, charter? Was it charter then? Don't say it. It was a 19-year contract that had been signed prior to me coming out to Oxford. I had no other choice. Do you know what my rates were? Anytime you get a monopoly where you do not have people have to compete with each other for the service. Community, hands down, their customer service will win. We need to keep these prices down. I don't want to pay three times what I'm paying for shoddy service and people that don't care. These people cared enough to pick up the trash out of my driveway. That says a lot. Let's not put the little guy out of business. So if you're going to move ahead with this ordinance, which I pray that you won't, I don't think that the majority of us in the township, and especially those of us in the outlying area, have even asked for this. So if you're gonna move forward with it, at least get a bid from them. They truly do care, they're a solid company, and that's who I'd prefer to give my money to. Thank you. As I, as I read in the opening statement, Paul, Paul's here, where's Paul at? Paul, I talked to Paul earlier tonight. We all agree, after this debacle and we withdrew it, we heard all the comments about how good community is and how they provided services. That's why the bid was squashed. We can't have that, we won't have that in our community. So I talked to Paul, uh, I have nothing against Paul, but I do have an understanding 
that everybody is here to talk about how good community is. We all know that. We've talked to them. We've told them. We appreciate it. So I'll take this one over here. Oh, Don't down here. I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, Jason Fiddler, I've been here for 20 plus years. I used to live off of Harvard Court, uh, moved over to the uh, to Waterstone. And, um, you know, one of the things I, I grew up with is uh, from the old neighborhood uh, is that when one business came in and they, we, they accepted a monopoly, it did not stop. It did not stop because the township got sued for other things. If you can do this, why can't you do this for my company? And there was no way to stop it. We had, uh, we had a river that ran through our backyard. Uh, this is up in Deerfield Township. And they had a trailer park come in and they had sewage that was running into there. Because they made a deal that could, they could not back out of, there was nothing they could do. Um, and I'm just wondering where this is gonna stop. Like if we give them a monopoly here, what, we have to get somebody else to a single snowplow company, a single salt, a single lawn mowing company? It, it, it just won't end. And so I'm just wondering where that loss, where the, that fine line comes in where you might be sued because you have three trucks running off the street right now. I don't see the, I, I, to me it doesn't, I'm not weighing the same. Thank you. Thank you. All right, where am I at? Middle? Okay. Hi, good evening. Ron Zemba, I live in Great Pines. I have been there for 16 years, and I have had one company, Waste Management. That name has not come up at all by anybody this evening. Our sub, maybe we're fortunate. We only have two haulers, so we only have four trucks coming down, and they all come down on the same day of the week, okay? I have called around in the 15, 16 years to other companies, just as I think everybody else should. How do your rates compare if you check it on an annual basis? I have never had any company beat waste management's rates for me. Oh, you're kidding. And I negotiate every year with them when they first send me the email and they tell me what my rate is going to be, I immediately call them up and I get reduced substantially from what they quote me on their standard billing period, okay? I pay annually, that probably helps out somewhat, but uh, or just my, my wife and myself, retirees, we have the one large pickup, we have bi-weekly recycle. We don't have any yard waste, so I think we have a good deal for what that is, and I don't know, again, how that compares, but my annual rate with waste management is $254, which I think is exceptional compared to what I've been getting from other people. So now here comes my question. If that's what I'm paying, and now we go with another company, will I have an option of, I don't want this service, I don't want a weekly recycle, I don't need yard waste, so will I have options as to what I want to select for my service? Through public comment, we will take those and review them should we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Over here. Hello, my name is Stephen Fox, and like Mr. Montgomery, I'm going to bend over to reach this as it pops out. There, can everybody hear? There you go. Um, so I, I'll just summarize some of the previous points that I really agree with. The survey and the opt-out, this does seem to be a solution in search of a problem. Um, the classic, I'm from the government, I'm here to help you whether you like it or not. Yeah. And I believe know, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, at kids, this, we, we need to respect and just talk then you also don't be disrespectful. Don't point your finger at me. Don't call me a kid. Well, then don't act like one. What I'm trying to do is hold a professional meeting here, and you're not being professional. I'm trying to get the points across to listen, and I can't hear, and nor can we address the comments. Thank you. I'm sorry if I started that, but it is a heartfelt comment. One other point I want to make is I felt that the quote in the Oxford Leader 
from one of the trustees on this board that said, and I quote, we know people can be passionate about their trash hauler. I found that to be a very condescending comment to be made in public on a, in a written newspaper. I feel that um, um, that was disrespectful of the community and should be apologized for. And I feel the only thing I'm really passionate about is government overreach, government's hand in my pocket, government trying to take money from my family. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi. I'm Hi. Tammy Martin. My husband and I have owned our home for 35 years on the north end of the township. We have community disposal right now. We also had the odd job, went through that fiasco. We didn't know anything about community disposal because the first call I made to was waste management and they said, sure, we'll help you out. Their cost was double. They missed our trash day several weeks, not in a row, there was two weeks in a row. Whenever I did call, you didn't get a call back. When I did get through to someone or they did return my call, they said, we'll send someone right out and pick that up. Well, guess what? On a hot summer day for two weeks and your trash sits at the road and just keeps mounting, we never knew where we were going to find our trash can. It was halfway in the road. They always had a recycle bin standing upright in the rain. We had a mess on our hand, the lid open on the trash can. When we dumped them, they sent us a bill for $75 just because they made us use their trash can. They picked their trash can up, but we still had to pay them the 75 bucks. They did a horrible job. I, we uh, then went with kid disposal for a short while. They had some problems that we called community disposal when I found them online. We love them. It's been five years. Our can is taken care of. They have multiple guys on their trucks. They're, we pay $75 for a quarter. We don't have yard waste included, which we like that. We pay 50 cents a bag. We don't have much yard waste. We are happy with the rate that we pay, but moreover, we are happy with the customer service that we get. My concern is, is if you go with a single hauler and it's one of the big monopolies, what happens to the little guy when they lose their bread and butter? We've already lost how many businesses in our state over COVID now you're going to put these other companies out of business if we choose to do something like this. And if you do happen to go with a single hauler, at least give us the option to opt out and not have it tacked in our property taxes and then or build, but make it where we don't have a voice in that. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, part of what I will be referring to is the Day, March 29th, Oxford. <laughs> the article mentioned trash haulers. The trash haulers mentioned trash. The article mentioned trash haulers wear and tear on our area roads will be reduced. What about all the delivery trucks? UPS, FedEx, not small trucks. Amazon, Prime, and many unmarked trucks seven days a week, all day and all night. Those are also huge wear and tear on the roads. Just drive Shippen Road and you will see. Large company trash haulers, no thanks. We tried one for four months and five times our trash was not picked up. The fifth time I called, I was told we would have to rent one of their cans um, to have our trash picked up. Will we have an additional cost with your new company to run a trash cart and not be able to use one we have owned for over 40 years and is still working great? <laughs> we immediately called community disposal service. What a great service compared to the prior company. And we can use our own trash can. No cost. We do not have to rent it. They also pick up one large item per quarter free, no charge. What will that cost be with the new trash company? Since you have been working on this over a year, why were we not notified sooner by mail? We received notice from community 
a couple of weeks ago about this meeting. It was also in the leader, but many of our neighbors don't pay any attention to the leader. I was making calls, letting them know this was up. They were very upset. Yes, we are loyal to community. Um, the, there was a picture in the leader with three uh, blue trash cans in front of some of the gentlemen. Are, will those, that be the service that we will be using? I had to question that. Um, why destroy smaller trash haulers and possibly cause their employees to lose jobs? Yes, we are loyal to community. They never leave the trash can in the road. It's always pretty much right where we put it ourselves. Our trash is out the night before. Um, but that's about it. We Thank you very much. Will, we do not want to use, lose community. Sir? Good evening. I'm Dan Reed from Davis Lake, and I have a couple of questions. One, how did you pick who went out to in a community, which I do have right now, to me they all have done a very decent job. I've had everyone that exists, and um, community is cheaper right now, that's why we have them but they've all done a decent job. My question is, with them having such a high percentage, how could you not even request a quote from them? That's why I removed it. I understand what, that why that's a good idea that you did that, but how could you miss that? And then, that brings up point number two, you're saying that part of this is now you're going to put in the RFP the ethics clause or whatever. Wouldn't that go into every RFP? It for, should. Right. Well, I think that somebody should wonder why that didn't happen. This is not the first bid that we've pulled back because people make mistakes. Whether they're honest mistakes, they're mistakes. They're made. That's why this board reviews it and has an opportunity to stop it. Okay. Well, that's all good. Now, I'm all for having one hauler. I hate having trucks running up and down my road every day of the week and tearing up my road. It's a private road, so I have to pay for it. Um, so I would be all for that if you guys could handle that. I would also be all for picking up the garbage every other week. Go with community. Why not? You guys should be recycling, not piling up your gar the big garbage can every week. Please, please, just talk to me. Right. So... Every other week, that would let somebody, a smaller operation like community, maybe pick up half the township on Tuesdays, the other half, they could split it up that way, reduce the wear and tear on the roads, not have to hire a bunch of people. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Candace Isaacson. I live on Tanview Drive. Um, just for an instance, uh, we have a rental, and in the village, it's $47, roughly a quarter, for garbage pickup there. I don't know who it is, but I'm going to make a couple of statements to back kind of that. Um, we were in Royal Oak for a long time. We went through waste management in Royal Oak. We went through Rizzo. Who remembers the Rizzo debacle? The red truck, yeah, that's now green. Can't cover that up. It'll never go away. And had horrible, horrible service with them in Royal Oak. Royal Oak is about 65,000 people. They divided up the city so every day a certain section got picked up. No reason why you can't have your local hauler do that. If they give you great service, stick with them. Remember, they're living here, they're raising their families here, and they're spending their money here, and they're also voting here. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Rand Kalkas. I live at the south end of the township. Uh, for most of the services that we receive as homeowners, such as utilities and everything, are managed by monopolies. Gas, electric, we have no say-so in the rates or anything like that. Either we accept the rates or don't have that utility there. So my question is, is why does the township feel that they need to take away this decision making away from the residents in this township and make it a government decision. It sounds like most people here are quite satisfied with their trash hauler. Uh, if there are incidents in neighborhoods that 
feel that there's too many trucks going down or I'm sure they could get together and, and come up with one trash hauler just to serve their own area, uh, just like other homeowner associations go. But eh, it gets a little tiresome when you keep on hearing that government is forcing this on us, forcing that on us. <clears throat> they want us to do this, they want us to do that. And that decision making is being taken away from us as citizens. And it's being turned over and run by bureaucrats, basically. And if there's problems with the service, we have no recourse to it because they don't answer to us. They answer to the governmental entity. And that's all that they're going to respond to is the government entity, not to the homeowners. So, again, my question is, why do you feel you need to take the decision-making process away from the homeowners? Thank you. I can address your question again. <clears throat> we talked about the 25% that's really happy with community disposal. There's another 75% of this community that is not represented right now because they didn't get a letter from their trash hauler. But we still get requests from them. Like I said, so the last time was 1989. We got another request. We have a request. We have requests every day to work on things. And according to the Michigan Constitution, garbage hauling is one that can be regulated by a township. So we reviewed it. We looked at it. A committee looked at it. I don't even know what the findings are. When I found out we, were, we are where we are in this process, that's why we stopped it. So to answer your question, there are other people that don't have the benefit of a close-knit homeowners association that regulates everything from garbage to tree cutting to the length of your grass. We, we, they don't have that. So that's why it's being reviewed. I'm sure everybody would say, don't rush back into it. Don't what? <laughs> don't rush back into it. You said you put it aside. I'm saying, no, don't rush back into it. I still didn't hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name's Jay Havener. I live on uh, South Coates Road, part of the Butterfield uh, Estates. Um, there's uh, two trash haulers that I'm aware of that goes up and down Coates Road, different days. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I walk Coates Road every day with my dog, and I find the trash haulers to be very... Uh, very good about slowing down when they see somebody on the road, unlike most cars and trucks that go up and down Coates Road. They, they think it's a raceway. My point is, I want to be in charge of my own economy. I don't want to have to pay through the township. I pay my taxes through the township, that's enough. And I'm, I'm happy with the services I get with the township, but I think this is an overreach. And to your point about the 75% of the people that keep requesting this, this is the first time, last Wednesday in the leader was the first time that I was ever, and I've lived in this township since 1992. It's the first time that I've heard anything about single trash haulers. So I don't know who these people are, this 75% and whose ears they got, but obviously, the board is not putting out information for, the, for us to make decisions. If you want to listen to the 75%, listen to all of us and send out some surveys. I've never gotten a survey from the township about trash haulers. Never. We never sent one out. Well, there you go. You should. Why start, why start a proposal or a search or an RFQ Q or RFP when you don't know what the majority wants because you haven't done your due diligence. That, that's, I disagree with that. We post all our meetings. We post in the Oxford Leader. We post on social media. We post in front of the village offices, the township offices. According to the state law, we put all these meetings mm -hmm. out in the public. Not everybody should. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Rick. My family and I live up in Waterstone. 
between my wife and I, we have almost a half century in governance in one form or at one level or another. And I, I agree wholeheartedly with the gentleman I applauded when he said some of the scariest words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. I absolutely agree with that. And trust me, that's an insider saying it. I can't help but want to point out to the audience that may not have noticed it, but how many reasons are they going to give, or is he going to give, for the reasons they pulled back the proposal? At first, it was because there might have been some communication that was improper. So impropriety in government entity doing a bid process, that's bad. And then it was because everybody called and said, oh, we like community so much. Well, which one was it? It can only be one. And I know that, generally speaking, a government body doesn't rescind an action unless it has a real good reason to do so. So I'm, I'm implored to wonder, three days ago when I had a conversation with, I'm not sure who it was, but it could have been you, when I said, okay, do what you're going to do, but I'm going to start filing freedom of information requests, and we're going to get all the communications from all of your staff and the entire council and committee, and we're going to find out exactly who's been talking with who, and then we can do some open source background investigations and find out who on your board or within the city or township is related to anybody that might be in the upper management of any of these waste haulers. If there's corruption, I'm going to find it. That's what I do. I'm real good at it. Now, on my way out the door, leaving you to think that, I'm going to leave you with one other thought. I may be a kid. Compared to you, that's probably an accurate assessment. But what I am is a voter. And what I am is an intelligent activist. And what I am now is opposed to you at your next campaign. Thanks, Rick. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name's Sandra Fernhaber. I live in um, Lake Ridge, Waterstone. Um, I just don't understand why you had a consultant do a survey when everything seems to be working fine. You know, that, that really puzzles me. So I just have one piece of advice for you, okay? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Susan Paul. I live in Lakes of Indian Wood. I'm strongly opposed to a one carrier, um, but I also understand people have concerns, roads, et cetera. I'm not one of them, but if they do, I think we already have the power through homeowners association, personal choice to seek out what's best. And while I try to save money in every single part of my life and spending, I also would say that we have had such good service with our community. I would rather pay a little more for better service, and those words never come out of my mouth that I would rather pay more. So um, just saying that price can't be the only dictator in these things, in my opinion, and it is a local business, and I do feel like we need to support our local businesses. Thank you. Sir. Yes. My name is Elton Hicks. I live on North Coach Road. I've, I've lived there for uh, over 55 years, and I've dealt with just about every trash hauler around. Now, I, I, I've, I've dealt with the ones that have gone out of business. I've dealt with the monopolies. And right now, I'm with community. And one thing with community is that I get a flat bill. The big monopolies, you get a flat bill, and then there's a little thing on there a lot of times it's called a fuel adjustment. And that, my friends, is a blank check for them. And in the article that was in the leader, one of, one of the people made a comment about the safety of children. And I would like to say to them, if you have the safety of children on your mind, go out and drive the dirt roads and look how many dead trees are along those roads. And if you will go back and check, I think you'll find that a few years back, a, f a dead tree fell on a car and killed the lady that was inside. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, Teresa Riley, I live on Maloney. And I just have one quick question to ask. If you do a, a 
if and when you do rebid. Now, are you going strictly by who gives the lowest bid, or are there other considerations to go with that? In our procurement policy, it is not always the lowest bidder. It's the one who provides the best service, the best price, the best support for. And how would you ensure, like, say you have one company, and, you know, they give all the promises in the world, and then people are not getting their trash picked up. What would you do about that? <laughs> I'm looking to the experts. I was not on the committee. I don't have all the answers. I don't know what the RFP was done. I'm moderating between the people on the committee, the people that weren't he aren't here. So I'm trying to get somebody to say, can you address that question, Curtis or John? Not at this time. <clears throat> can you address it? Well, we we covered a lot of areas of this RFP that was been thrown out. And that, that's one of the considerations that was given in the RFP. But we never have got to the point of a actual bid going out. So that would be in the, in the contract terms that would be negotiated that probably coming up, that's something that we would look at strongly about missed pickups or, or uh, trash that was left So behind. not until after the fact and get a whole bunch of complaints, then you would think about doing something about it? No, it, it would be built in to make sure those guarantees are there. You know, whether, whether it's like uh, if a call comes in, then within one hour, somebody would come out yeah. and actually clean up the whatever debris or that concern is with a missed call. I was only going to do one question, but another one. Okay, say you have, let's say, five bids come in. Would you let the residents see what the bids are before one is chosen? All the, all the bids on anything that's procured by Oxford Township is visible by the community on the bid opening day before the bids are accepted. They're approved by the members of this board and reviewed in front of the board meetings. Okay, so will we know in advance when the board meeting would be that would, because we haven't found out like one of the previous people said, that. nobody knew about the trash hauling thing either. I didn't know about it either. Yeah. What I mean? So you really kind of need to have a way for all the residents to know what's going on. How do we, the question is, how are the residents notified of bid openings? Okay, if, if it's a formal bid opening, Usually there'll, there'll be a posting of a time and a place, location, that those bids will be open and read aloud to whomever would but like to But where would the attend. posting be? How would we find out about it? Usually, usually in the case that we just went through was through the Mitten website. That would be one. We could actually put a notice in the Oxford Leader. We can put it on social media. We can make this known. Well, probably, um, well, everybody probably at Oxford gets the Oxford Leader. So if you could do it that way, but this mitten thing, I don't think anybody no, ever heard of it. No, no, it's, it's, for, it's for corporations not bidding on, on jobs on that, or putting a proposal in. But, so uh, you will have a way to let everybody know about it. That, that is the goal. You know, okay, uh, thank you very much. Okay. You what? <clears throat> I can't hear you. Can I, can I say something? Uh, yeah, Trustee Charles wants to say something. Just a quick uh, comment regarding the young lady's question about um, quality of uh, the service. I think, Mr. Wright, uh, there was something you'd mentioned about having somebody from a single hauler company have a person in the township offices. Is that true? Well, based upon what we were attempting to accomplish here, that was one of the options of one of the proposers that we received information from that during the transition period there would be uh, employee of that company that would actually field calls of situations like missed pickups or garbage that would be strung along the road, and then that would be addressed uh, basically within a one-hour period, for example. So there, there were trying to hit every base that possibly could be thought of to address issues that we've heard tonight here. And, and maybe not all of them, but a uh, majority of them were on, on track to to provide you with, with a waste hauler that would service Oxford Township to the satisfaction of at least the majority. And um, a lot of work went into this for you. Uh, we're looking, we were 
doing this from a transparent standpoint, even though it might be contrary to what the thoughts are. But um, we we put the time to try to try to do what's right for Oxford Township, not to make it adversarial or or uh, against your wallet or your pocketbook. Because me as an elected official, I don't want to put more burden on myself because you're the ones that put us in office to try to represent you. So that, that's the reason why we are doing what we did. And as Supervisor Curtis indicated, we have to service 20,000 people in the township, not just 25% or whatever it is. So um, I appreciate what you've done with your comments and that, uh, being part of this committee. That's something that I'll take to, to what I, the next step may be for the township here, uh, whatever that might be. It might be zero to actually coming back with a proposal in the near future, but at this time, um, that, that's pretty much where we're at as far as going back to Trustee Charles's question or comment. We did have that situation basically covered uh, for where we were at. Hey, who's next? This gentleman. Good evening. Armando Modell, Gulf Highlands. Uh, been out, lived in Oxford since 1989. First of all, I'd like to say two things. This gentleman back here, if I can pronounce your name right, Rick. There you go. The one thing is, right off the, right off the get, I just found out about this. I got community. They're great. When odd jobs fell apart and left us, them guys didn't charge us a dime. Whatever we paid in advance, they took care of that and didn't come back and try to collect anything. They've been outstanding. Right off the get, they weren't even involved in this. So that tells me somewhere in this board, somewhere in your guys' negotiations, there was already corruption. Because if we didn't find out about it, we, they, they wouldn't have found out about it. I wouldn't have got a letter, or they, wouldn't have, they weren't even involved in the first bid. So right off the get, you already, I'm already feeling like you guys, there's already somebody trying to get something up top in one of them other companies. Second, second is to address, second, to address that concern. Sex. That's exactly why we pulled it. You up. stopped it because you got caught. No. You stopped it because you got caught. If you don't get caught, things go through. Things go through. I'm not a kid. I'm a grown man, old man. Now I'm older. Things get through. I'm older. You got caught, now we're here, and you say 75%? There's only 25% here, maybe, possibly. But se you can't tell me that 75% 75, 75 of this community wants you to dictate who we got to pick. Because if I have problems, I got one service that I got to deal with, and I pay them, and they don't provide a good service, it's terrible. So America, we, got, we, we have the right to have our own choices, pay our own bills, pay our own stuff. If you don't provide it, we're struggling. Who do we go to? Who do we go to? And you said you've been working on this for a year? Is this, is this what I heard? This has been discussed for a year? Yes, the committee has been... A year, and here, I, man, I live in this community. All these people, I'm sure, live in this community, and I, it's like secret until something comes up and gets caught. The other thing is you keep pointing to him that you don't know. People ask you questions. You, who's the boss? Who's running? The, who's the top elected official here? You. This is my meeting, yes. It's your meeting. But you, I've, all I've heard from you about four or five different times, I don't know. I wasn't involved. Well, how are you supposed to be a leader of this when community? I involved, Hold up, this sir. Put I get it on the agenda. Sir, I got the mic. Yeah. I got the mic. I'm trying to answer your question. You can when I'm done. You're elected official. I got the mic. All I've heard for you is for four or five different questions. You look down, the, you look down here and look at Curtis, look at everybody else, and say, hey, I, I wasn't involved, to put your blame somewhere else. You're the leader, man. You got elected to lead, lead. Don't try to push something on this community that we don't want. And I guarantee you there's more than 75% of the people out in this community that don't want you dictating who I got to choose as a garbage disposal. Are you finished? Yep. Thank you. Go ahead, you can answer. What's your question? How to come you don't know about anything? In township government, what we do is we assign committee members to take on tasks. I get 20 calls a day about roads. I'm on the road committee. I get a couple calls about cemeteries. I'm on the cemetery committee. John's not on the cemetery. Joe's not on the cemetery. I get calls about safety paths. I give it to the safety path chairman. If it's a question about the DDA, I give it to Catherine, who's a member of that committee. It, and Rod Charles, he goes to our SEMCOG meetings. We break this work up. 
and then the work is brought to this committee, to this board, for decisions recommended by the committees of the township, of your elected officials. Mm -hmm. Those committees bring us the data. Yes, I control this meeting, and yes, when a committee brings me something that doesn't look right, I take it off or I put a stop to it like we did. I'm not, I don't know everything that's going on on safety paths. I don't know everything that's going on with the trash haulers. I don't know everything that's going on with the DDA. I try to, as an elected official, I take phone calls from homeowners association presidents. I meet with residents daily. I had five in my office today about nothing about trash hauling. So we break this up to do what our residents want us to do. And when it comes to this board, we all learn what our committees are recommending. So you when learn at the meeting or before the meeting? Anyways, you're not going to answer the question. I mean, you're dancing around it, so go ahead. I'm not dancing so, around anything. I'm telling you. I would just like to have my own right. I'd like to have my own right to my own garbage. I know, and quote. you don't understand township government, and I'm trying to explain it to you. Sir, your, ma'am, you're next. Oh, thank you. My name is Christine Payne. Um, I've been here for 25 years. I live at Butterfield Acres. We are a one street sub with maybe 30 houses. Um, we had an odd job originally, and um, when they weren't going to pick up anymore, we got together and tried to figure out what would be the best price for all of us. We have two trash haulers on our one street. Many people would like one, but two is fine. We've been happy with community. Now, a couple of things have been brought up. I did a little bit of research, and this idea of the single trash hauler has been brought up for a long time. Margaret Payne, who's no relation to me, has brought this up several years. As a matter of fact, in 2019, Joseph Ferrari said in the newspaper that if the township is going to ever have a single waste hauler, the push has to be it has to be resident driven. He said a petition were to be signed by, for example, maybe 2,000 people, we put it on the ballot and let voters decide. Why don't we do that? <laughs> Why can't we let the, the voters decide? Thank you. Another point I have is it was brought up in the paper recently, as other people have brought up, um, about safety and about the weight and the wear and tear on the roads. You even said that you have five on your street. Well, in terms of the weight, <laughs> I looked that up too. <laughs> a trash hauler can weigh up to 80,000 pounds fully loaded. Well, a mulch truck, which I have come twice a year, is about 26,000 pounds. Can you tell me when I can have that? A concrete hauler can weigh up to 66 pounds. A tractor trailer delivery truck, another 66 pounds, 66,000 pounds. Amazon driver can weigh up to 8,000 pounds. In our one street, we probably have an Amazon truck four or five times a day. So <laughs> that a weekly really adds up. A school bus is 36,000 pounds fully loaded with children. We get one four times a day to pick up in our one street. Times that by five times per week, that's way more than two trash trucks coming into our street. So I don't think that it's a valid reason to say it's wear and tear on the roads. Another issue was safety. And I did some research on that too. Um, from 2016, that's the only accident I saw with a trash truck. Two people died in that accident, unfortunately. And what happened was a trash truck broke down on Ray Road, put their flashers on, little flags around, the person that com was coming towards them, heading west, ran into the back of them. They weren't paying attention, and unfortunately, it was fatal. So that's the only accident I've seen <laughs> from 2016 that involved a trash truck. However, <laughs> I looked up various areas within our community. And actually, on my street, on Coriel, there were four. <laughs> four on one street sub. I have to be the mean guy and have you wrap this up, please. Okay. On Grampian, there were 10 with one fatality. 
10. And a trash truck was one, and that wasn't even their fault. So at this point, I have to question, what is this really about? If it was safety on the roads, it wouldn't have taken us three years to get the speed limit changed. You know Debbie. <laughs> she got the speed limit changed on Coates Road. That's going to our township park. There are no pathways to get to the township park. Can we please look at, I know you guys are working on it, but let's stop using the funds to hire people to do research on trash pickup. We don't want it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hello, I'm Pat Johnson. I live in a Lakes of Indian Wood, and I've been there for 22 years. Uh, one thing I just, before I even start though, is just the one word I haven't heard mentioned is recycling at, at all on any of this stuff. So I'm hoping that that's part of the next RFP that goes out is talking about picking up recyclables. Now, I what I'd like to say is I've had <clears throat> waste management for 22 years, and I guess I'm only the second person to talk about that. I have found their service to be very reliable. However, it's also <laughs> the golden priced stuff. I mean, it is very pricey, and um, unlike the person who spoke previously, I pay qu quarterly when they bill me, and indeed, the price goes up every single time. And because I have asked them to actually send me a bill in the mail, I pay $7.50 per bill for that privilege. <laughs> yes, it's $7.50. If I wanted them to email me the bill and access my uh, bank account so they could tap into my bank account and take the money out, then it would be free but I really would have preferred to pay a bill, and that cost me $7.50 every quarter. Um, I would personally much prefer a single hauler in my neighborhood. Uh, I, because we are, each of us, and are paying our own garbage bills, I don't know how many haulers we have through our neighborhood. I'm not <clears throat> so concerned about, well, I, I'm not knowledgeable about uh, wear and tear on the roads. But I can tell you that it means that there are trash bins out, of the, out of, at the curb throughout the whole neighborhood every day of the week. And that's not very attractive. Um, regarding waste management, I do know that if I went and if I go to cancel my service, <clears throat> they're going to charge me $75 to pick up my, my bin the same bin that I've been paying rental on for 22 years, and I asked if I could buy that bin from them. No, 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 we can't have you do that. You have to rent it. And uh, yeah, they've got a $75 fee to go come and collect them when we cancel the, our service. And um, anyway, that's uh, very reliable, but very pricey, and I can't believe that anything that you might arrange in the way of a single trash hauler, hauler is going to cost me more than what it's costing me now. It did not occur to me to try to negotiate. Oh, that's the other thing, yes. The gentleman spoke of calling them up when he gets his bill and renegotiating every year. I haven't done that. I actually did do that once, and yes, they brought the bill down. I, I don't think that's much of a way to run a company tell you the truth, that you have to call them up and try to uh, negotiate your bill down. And, uh, but he's paying half of what I'm paying every year. He, he, he mentioned his annual, his annual cost, and it's half of what I'm paying. Anyway, I would look forward to having a single hauler. Um, and everybody else seems to like community. I've never had any experience with them. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, <clears throat> my name is uh, Charles Harper. I live on uh, Seymour Lake Road, so I get all kinds of traffic all, all day long. But my question uh, is that w if this is finalized, uh, I was going to ask if there was going to be a person from the township that it's going to be the representative that all us people out here 
would be calling for if we had problems. But I understand the, uh, the gentleman said something about using a person from the corporation or the person or the service that you guys pick. Uh, that's like putting a fox in a chick chicken coop because are we going to have somebody watching over them to make sure that they are making that one hour deadline to get their calls out to other people? Thank you. Thank you. Again, all of your comments, uh, while they're not all being answered, they're being considered by the, com uh, <coughs> the committee that's uh, in charge with investigating this. Mr. Porritt. Good evening, Jim Porritt. Uh, been here for about 45 years. I live around the corner from here on uh, Oak Ridge. It's not in the subdivision, it's not a gravel road. Um, I am not here at the behest of any of the particular, or at the invitation of any of the particular contractors. Um, I did see it in the Oxford Leader, so I guess I count myself among that 75%. Um, but I'm again it. Uh, I'm opposed to this uh, concept. Uh, but uh, what I've noticed is uh, there seems to be a willingness to consider a one party or one hauler uh, contractor that doesn't give much consideration to the impact on the existing contractors. And some of them are small. Uh, I have a small uh, hauler, and uh, he's been reliable. He's been never missed a, a day in six years. Uh, is reasonable, he's responsive, he answers his own phone. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And I, I suspect that if he were not allowed to continue in Oxford, he'd be out of business. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's probably the cause of what happened to Oddjob. Uh, they were largely in Orion Township. Orion Township went to a single hauler. It wasn't him. Uh, he had tons of money invested in uh, trucks, uh, employees, and ended up in bankruptcy. I think you ought to take into account the impact that this kind of uh, request would have on small local business. I think it's outside your role uh, as government to be putting people out of business. Uh, like others here, I also have had the experience of a township run monopoly uh, through what was charter, now Spectrum. Uh, that has resulted in arbitrary increases in prices, lower production in terms of what we get from the cable company, lousy service, and they, when you answer, uh, it's hard to get through because the people who are in Davison aren't the ones you're supposed to talk to because you have to go through some central office and spectrum. It's just it's awful. And I think that's a natural outcome of avoiding um, monopolies. So again, I don't... Here in Oxford, I don't see that we, we need it. Um, I, I'm sympathetic to those folks who would live in these subdivisions where you have multiple lots and multiple carriers and multiple days and garbage at the curb. But what I've heard is that the homeowners associations have addressed that. They've been able to contract themselves, and there's no reason to think that they can't. If, if there's a homeowners association or even if it's a group of people uh, who get together and negotiate with a contractor, they can do that. They're free to do that. And there's plenty of uh, benefits f for them to do that. So the township doesn't need to service that, and particularly if we get the township involved as a liaison between all of us and that caller. I have uh, had a building in Lake Orion, and we had a, a single hauler administered through the village. Um, I could not call hauler to say, why did my trash get, not get picked up? I couldn't call them if they made a mess out in, the, in my parking lot. I had to call somebody in the village. And sooner or later, somebody would get a hold of them, and they'd get back to the village and then back to me. Uh, that's because the, the township got involved, or the village got involved as a liaison, and I suspect that they were, there was some kind of revenue stream that the village was receiving for providing that service not to us, but to the hauler. When we talk about providing space in the township hall to allow a contractor to hand, handle a business, 
Let them all do that from their own office. Let them answer their own damn phone. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mr. Supervisor. Sarah, I live on um, uh, Baldwin Road and for about a decade now. Um, I'm curious. We've heard from a few folks, and I just didn't understand maybe the answer. Um, so I've heard three different explanations for why the RFP was canceled, uh, one being implied unethical contact, conduct um, because community wasn't included was the second, and then we are where we are was the third. I've heard from your mouth, uh, Mr. Supervisor. I'm curious, what is the answer in a public forum for why the RFP was canceled? The RFP was canceled because the procurement policy was not followed, community was inadvertently or not left off of the bid, and in fairness, I canceled the bid because it's not fair to everybody, so I stopped it and said, you guys need to, the committee wasn't uh, communicating, I wasn't listening, but it was stopped because community wasn't included, a member of our contracting with our procurement of this single hauler made a mistake, did not call him, and that in itself is a, a violation of our procurement policy. So yeah, it's because he was left off. It's because phone calls were made outside of the committee by a third party supplier. So I stopped it. And I appreciate that. I, I think we could have avoided some confusion and frustration at the onset of this meeting if that was maybe your answer start, that it wasn't just unethical behavior, it wasn't that com uh, community wasn't included, and it wasn't because we are where we are. I feel like there was a little miscommunication from you to the my, community, my, and um, I would just offer that in the future, this conversation's not going to go away, that potentially your mm, explanation is provided in a more clear and concise manner at the onset as opposed to a few different answers throughout the whole meeting. I know that it was frustrating me, which is why I stood in line for 20 minutes to ask you that question. So I, thank I you I tried for your to time. answer it in a statement that number one, we had a violation of our procurement policy. Number because two, we, we, it was left off of community. Community brought that to our attention through all of its customers. The customers called us, wrote us, emailed us, and when it finally got to fruition, I set the agenda and I took it off. And again, I appreciate that. I think just saying that unethical behavior and then well community wasn't included is a little confusing, That's all at least to me. So um, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Hi, Doug Anderson. I uh, live on a cul-de-sac around the corner in a community that has uh, four different haulers on four different days. So I do uh, understand the frustration of having trash on, on the streets four out of seven days a week. And uh, between recycle trucks and trash trucks, that's eight to 12 trucks with compost too per week. And since we're on a cul-de-sac, they make the turnaround and come back again. That could be up to 36 passes in front of my house. So uh, when I heard there was a single hauler, unfortunately I did hear it through community disposal, but I was happy that somebody was looking into the possibility of only having two or three trucks down my street per week. Um, could it have been done better? Yes. I should not have found out from my hauler. Um, there should have been more communication. I do have a suggestion if you decide to go down this path, is to possibly divide up the community into zones whether that's two or four zones, and let each zone be um, quoted separately. That would give opportunity for each business to put in their best price. And I'm hoping that price is around $75, because that's about what I'm paying for the community disposal. Uh, my only question is, is that zoning with uh, request for quotes even a possibility? Is that request a possibility to break it up into zones? Yes, it is a possibility. Then that would be directed at the committee. Yes, sir. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming with a solution. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi, Leah, Rick's wife. Um, I, I have a question. If you knew about this meeting tonight, how come you didn't prepare? Uh, 
How come you didn't prepare for tonight and have answers for people that the questions that we're asking? If you you knew that we were going to talk about it, how come you didn't prepare? Well, how I get prepared is every Thursday at four o'clock, the agenda is set. And on the agenda is everything that comes to me. I work with Clerk Wright, we formulate the agenda, get all of the supporting documents to the agenda, and then we put it out to the trustees by uh, noon on Friday? Yeah, pretty much. 12 o'clock on Friday, the, the Friday before the Wednesday meeting. So last Friday, they would have gotten a prepared package with all of the agenda items. So you're so, saying, sorry, so, so you're saying that last week you knew about this meeting? Last week, yes. Okay, so then why didn't you prepare for tonight to answer our questions? Through the past two weeks, I have been preparing since the letters went out to the community residents asking questions, how the heck did this happen? And I went back and I reviewed everything and I said, we cannot move forward with this in front of the residents of the community with poor and unethical dealings. So I run the agenda. I talk to all committees. As you, if you stick around, we're gonna have the fire department talk. We're gonna have the engineers talk. Uh, we're gonna have the, uh, the planning talk. That's awesome. We're, we're, here, we're here about trash tonight. I have another question. I'm a numbers person and there's 75%, you're saying there's 75% of our community out here that uh, has issue with it. Where's the documentation of that 75%? Because I don't want you to pull the numbers out of the sky. So where is the, the statistics that you have to support the 75% people that are complaining? Um, I didn't say 75% of the people were complaining. I said that 25% of the customers that community services are very happy. So that leaves 75% of the people that don't have community. The ones okay. we hear from aren't totaled 75% because okay. you heard it tonight. Some people are happy, they don't complain. They have single hauler. Fair enough. Um, my last question for you is, where are the statistics that you have um, regarding accidents and exhaust emissions and too many trucks on the road. Where can I find those statistics so I can examine them with my own eyes? The accident statistics is usually handled by the Road Commission of Oakland County. Uh, by road intersection, they print out the number of accidents. So then you would have statistics in the bid, right? to show why we need to go to one carrier? I'd, I'd have to divert to the committee to see if they looked at the statistics. So you don't have the statistics here tonight to tell us what they are so you can justify why this is a good thing? No, I don't know. Okay, so you're not prepared. I just wanted to say thank you, Community Disposal, because they pick up trash and they, they're there and they're reliable. And thank I'm you. sorry that you're not prepared. No problem. Yes, sir. Hello, my name's Cody Euchre. Uh, I live over in Harvard Court. I have not been here for 30 years. Uh, I moved in about a year and a half ago and we went with waste management and it was one of the worst experiences ever. Um, I think we had it for eight or nine months and it took three months just to cancel. Um, long wait times on the phone, hours. Uh, we have jobs so we couldn't constantly be on the phone. We still have their trash bin if anyone with waste management wants it, come and get it. It's been at the... Uh, the end of the driveway for three weeks and they never came and got it. Uh, so it's been the worst experience. We did switch over to community, it's been great. Um, but it wasn't only about cost. Um, waste management would not pick up cardboard that I bundled up next to the trash bin. Uh, that's, we're buying on Amazon, online, we have a lot of boxes. I bundled them up nicely and waste management would not take them if it wasn't in, the, in a bag in the trash can. So it was very frustrating. So it's more about service and how they're servicing the community, um, picking up our trash. Uh, it's a lot of time to cut up boxes, make sure buying gar garbage bags that are massive to fit everything. So it was very frustrating. Um, 
that's all I have to say today. I thank you for hearing us, good, bad, or ugly, but appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Tab Brinker. Uh, I live on Dayton Street. Um, I guess my question, well, I'm, we have community. I'm, I'm happy with them. I'm not really here to spouse for them or against them. But my question was, some, one of the earlier gentlemen said that he was the head of a homeowner's association and they had a contract and would you, you know, immediately charge them or not? Well, uh, community also sent it out to individuals offering us a 10-year contract. I mean, if we sign that with them, would we have the right to go with them if you gave, eventually gave the bid to somebody else? No, it's uh, a single hauler trash ordinances for everybody in the community. Okay, so would it, would that be the same for a homeowners association that the whole neighborhood had it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Peggy Rodaway, and I've been here since the 70s. And I had, um, just to start with, I had waste management for many years, probably 30 years, uh, or until what, what happened was an odd job went out of business. But I always did that. I always called waste management, and they gave me a beautiful price to pay annually. And I was satisfied with that. And I was satisfied with their service. But when odd job went out of business, they were so busy booking people, and they refused. And I called them multiple times, and they refused to, even though I'd been on an annual rate with them for a couple decades, three decades maybe, they refused to give me an annual rate. So anyway, that's just a comment about your thing. My questions are really more about process, and I, I've heard a lot of explanations, but I do have a couple of questions, and maybe you can confirm them and maybe not. I understand that the consultant that was hired to do this uh, proposal is from Ann Arbor, am I correct, or is that... It, yes, his okay. office is in Ann Arbor. And, I, and I understand he did um, proposals for other neighboring communities. I don't know what they are, but that's how he was selected. Um, I just wanted to confirm that. And it's also my understanding that his, his point, or what he was trying to do, what his goal was, was to get the RFPs to other single haulers, other, and in fact, the other people, other callers that already have large community one hauler contracts. And I believe that's even how this 70 page um, application for an RFP came about. So um, I guess my thought is this, some of the most expensive and, and the largest um, haulers are the ones that already sent in RFPs. They're the big dogs on the block. And my guess is they're making enough money because they're single haulers and already have that status that now those large companies can afford to have a consultant to fill out a 70-page RFP. I think that a request for 70 pages might be customary, but I don't think that's fair to do that to small community um, employers or businesses. Um, so, um, and speaking of paperwork, I called the township and asked why we weren't notified, and I was told, well, it was in the uh, Oxford Leader and it's online and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, why can't we get a notice of that? And I was told, well, the mailing is expensive. Well, naturally, that's expensive to mail that to everybody. But you're already mailing us, you just mailed us our, um, our assessments. I mean, a, a little slip of paper could have gone in there that says we're considering this or an update. We get tax bills twice a year. We get water bills. They come on a, on a card, so you can't really, I don't think you can add, add to that. But you're already doing mailings, and it seems that I mean, we, we own property in the UP, we have property in Presque Hill, and we have property in Pontiac. And all three of those, those cities and communities, when they send a bill out or an assessment, they always have updates for that 
area and anything we need to know. And whether it's fire department, water, whether it's a community building here or road thing um, or clearing of trees, but we get notices in the mailings that are already being mailed. And I guess I'm surprised that Oxford's not a leader in that. Um, all these other three tax bills I get, I'll get, I get notices. So I don't think a, a, a separate mailing would have been necessary, but maybe including things when you're already doing a mailing. And because we have all agreed that doing a mailing is pretty expensive, I think that the right thing to do is to is for this consultant or whoever this person is, I think he's being paid around $15,000, but I might be wrong. It seems like he personally ought to reimburse community for having, because look at the mailing they had to make for, to over 2,000 people, and they paid for that. And it seems like, like, like uh, the consultant ought to uh, reimburse community for that mailing cost. And when it comes time to make a decision, we all would like to be notified and, and, and be there. So because we think that we think that without that mailing from community, something would be going through that's very costly and very permanent and very um, undemocratic. So thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Charles Devlin. Uh, I live in Oxford Woods uh, on Kevill Lane, and uh, we do have you know, five or six different services in Oxford Woods, and it does result in 15 to 18 different trucks per week. Uh, Mondays we have six trucks because uh, two different companies are competing on the same day. Uh, with the multiple haulers, you do end up with the extra wear and tear. People were complaining, you know, that we've well, got Amazon trucks and I have mulch trucks. They don't weigh nearly the same amount. The garbage trucks are far and away the heaviest trucks I will have in my subdivision unless somebody gets one of these mega gravel haulers, bring them 50 or 100 yards of gravel. I will never have that amount of wear and tear uh, Jim Sharp, the engineer, can probably explain the wear and tear on one heavy vehicle instead of 500 residents coming back and forth in their pickup or their car. Uh, another thing I'd just like to mention, the meeting has seemed to have gotten very adversarial. I do not trust you guys much farther than I can throw you, but I do think people need to not make allegations of payoffs or backroom deals. Uh, if I don't like what you guys do, I will get out and try to get your ass out through a vote. Uh, I'm happy that you guys are up here putting up with all this stuff, but again, I keep track of what you guys are doing. Uh, I think that the free market will work just fine for us in Oxford Township if we can put these contracts up for bid, and I believe we will, on a yearly or every other year basis. Uh, the idea of having maybe two zones with one company doing one end of the township and one the other, that will work. You know, I'm sure you guys are going to have some sort of a performance bond or guarantee in this so that people's complaints about, oh, they're not picking up my trash will be dealt with. Again, I think some people are taking this to a too high of a level with these complaints. Uh, I don't believe the opt-out is much of an option. It certainly is not an option in my homeowners association. That's why we have five or six companies. People are opting out. Um, I think, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, I do appreciate your efforts. I know you guys do put up a lot of guff, but again, I keep my eye on you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I am representing the Kanka household. We are in the Woodbriar subdivision at Drainer and 24. We do have uh, about four different companies that come through. It is a problem in our neighborhood, both with cars that are parking on the side of the street and it can block traffic, school buses, things like that. Um, while the trash haulers are safe around the kids, uh, because we have four days worth of garbage pickup, we 
have four days worth of scrappers coming through our neighborhood looking for things that have been thrown out. Uh, people clean a lot in my neighborhood, so there's always something. They are not safe, um, and also it would be better for their own business to be able to only have to go around once a week to look for these types of things. Uh, plus, they're using big diesel trucks, hauling things around. That's got to be something that's probably not even been thought of because it, it's not really impact or you know it's not part of the city plans. But um, having one day a week would be really nice. However, we do not support the monopoly. We think there's too many uh, opportunities for things to go wrong. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, my name is Dan Davis, and uh, I'm somewhat familiar with uh, Bloomfield Township and Waterford. Waterford just started a one hauler. They've been in operation for two years. They have trash pickup and yard waste and one bulk item per month, and that's $41. And if you want recycling, it's another $15 per, well, that's per quarter, should I say. That's, uh, so it's about $56 if you have both. Uh, the other thing is, uh, in Bloomfield, uh, it's $49 every quarter, and they pick up every week, regardless of what it is. Uh, no questions asked. Matter of fact, I'll give them a call, and they just tell me, well, you don't have to call. We just pick it up. Just put it out. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out, I'm single. I put out a 13-gallon bag per week, uh, and I really don't put it up because I can't fill the trash can for about four or five weeks. And the thing is, if I'm going to pay the same as my neighbor who puts out not only the trash that's in the trash can, but lines it up, uh, I should get a discount, I think. I mean, it's going to take me a month to fill a trash can. So they only have to come down once a month instead of four or five times. But the, the thing is, I've had the Bloomfield House for the more than 20 years. I've had probably two problems, and all I had to do was make a phone call. And it was corrected that day. No problems. Uh, this board, I'm pretty sure, is qualified to handle any problems that come up. If you don't put in a 10-year contract, you know, and you've got reasonable thinking behind it, you can correct any problems that you run into. Now, I simply call the township, whether it's Waterford or Bloomfield, if I have a problem. But it's really rare that I have a problem. You have one hauler, you don't have 15 trucks coming up and down. Um, they're picking up everything there is. And if there's a problem, you can, you can talk with the people. But the idea that uh, if you're going to have one hauler, it's going to become a monopoly. Well, it won't become a monopoly if the board takes care of the problems. As simple as that. And if you run into uh, a problem where one company goes bankrupt, Rizzle did that in Bloomfield, and immediately they had another company. It wasn't a big problem because you're talking 8,000 8, homes to be picked up. Right now, you've got a truck hauler that picks up one or two on a block, five on another, one on another, skip two streets. It's costing him time, labor, and everything else. If they can pick up all in one street, he's making money. As simple as that. So uh, it looks like a plus for me, and it's just going to depend on you guys uh, writing the contract and understanding that you got to live with it, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I'm Barb Cunyon, and I live in the Red Barn South. We do not have a homeowner's association. Uh, my concern is right now we have priority waste, and to cancel it, it's going to really get you. It's six months billing with the gas surcharge with no service. So if I was call them tomorrow and say I'd like to cancel, it's going to cost me $175 per 
for no service. I would like to see if we go with the single waste hauler that we, as people who have priority or any of the other companies that have that in their contract or in their agreement, I didn't know this when I got it. It came probably a year later. Read the little box. It says, you agree to this? And at the very end, it says that. Do you want an answer to that question? Yes, sir. Uh, Dan, do you want to address that contract and refund and all that? Well, there's a couple of different answers. But the first answer is, is that if the ordinance changes the law under which the hauler operates, they have to abide by the law. Okay. And if there is a single hauler, I would say, generally speaking, that contract would be rendered null and void. Now, I can't give you legal advice, and I don't know how the haulers are going to react to that. But generally speaking, if the law under which the haulers operate uh, changes uh, and they can no longer provide the service, that contract should be null and void. My next point is I have talked to Mr. Knoll, I don't know if I'm, several times. I have seen this in the paper for probably six or nine months, little bits, but it was in there that the county or the township was considering this. So. Obviously, people aren't reading the paper, but I have to say I am full agreement for a single waste because one, the wear and tear on the roads. I think our bill will go down. I know our daughter lives in Lake Orion. She pays $55 a quarter. I'm at 83. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Matt. I live off of Gill Street. My first question is, who had the final decision on what consultant to hire to do this? Like somebody there had to be an obvious choice. Somebody had to make the final decision on who to hire to do it. That this board makes the final decision. On so who to hire. then, in other words, somebody neglected to do the research because obviously this consultant didn't do the correct job that was hired to get done. So, what's your question? Who, who's to blame? Do you want somebody's head on a plate? That'd be mine. I'm just asking. Okay, what I'm telling you is it was caught through the township process. The people you elected to watch your money have made a decision that an error was made. In our transparency, we stopped that process. So, then, in other words, you're the one to blame. Sure. For this. Blame me. So. I took it off the agenda. I talked to uh, the uh, owner of community. I, t I apologize that our contractor. I've failed. had community for the last three years. I pay $54 quarterly. Why would I want that to change? It doesn't matter what I put out. It still gets picked up regardless. That's why I took it off the agenda tonight. And I told them to go back and figure it out ethically, including everyone in our procurement plot process to be open, transparent, and not do unethical things that exclude a member of this community. In my opinion, some, somebody obviously appears getting a chunk of the pie trying to go to a single uh, trash hauler. So... Yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Rosner. Larry Rosner. I've been a member here, worked here 22 years. Uh, during those 22 years, I probably had quite a few of the same things we've heard a lot of here tonight as far as having trouble with garbage. By the same token, the last three years, I've had a great relationship, no problems, it works. Uh, I just have a question couple of questions. Some of us out in a rural area have dumpsters, so we don't have garbage cans. Is that, would that be handled within the contract and have you looked at it? You don't have to answer that question now, but that needs to be part of what you're looking at. What does someone do? They have a dumpster. They don't have garbage cans. They, you know, what do they do? That should be looked at because there are quite a number. You know, it's not like 
you know, the, the big war where they, the community has a spokesperson and so forth. That's one of the questions that should be there. That uh, looks at the other thing. Uh, some of us go business trips or we go away for the summer home, winter home. In the contract that I now have, all I have to do is pick up the phone, call them, and say I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be gone. This, this, if it's 30 days, I get a credit. I pay annually. I just get a credit. So it's, it's easy to do if you have a summer home. So that needs to be in the contract so that we can continue doing that. The other thing is I feel uh, that it's very important that you don't take away, I pay the bill to the contractor. If they don't give me service, I have the most powerful tool in the world. I say you're fired. So you know, that I don't believe the township should be in between. You've got more important things to do than to take and get in an argument with garbage collectors and residents about something. Let the resident go right to the end. And you do that by letting them pay the bill. Thank, Thank you, Larry. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> my name's Bert Liptak. I live in Gulf Highlands. <clears throat> I'm retired from the uh, U.S. Army Tank Automotive Command. I've been in several, been involved throughout my career in several um, requests for proposals, <clears throat> contract evaluations. And before you release the RFP, you know, you identify your selection criteria. So everyone knows when the bids come in, how they're going to be evaluated. You know, it could be lowest cost, most responsible bidder. We've gone to a lot of the times, <clears throat> committees I was on, it would be uh, uh, best value, where you identify selection criteria, where cost might be number one, then like additional services, like trash, waste, collection, stuff like that, and you identify the criteria how you're going to evaluate the proposals. So not necessarily the lowest bidder would get it, but what's the best value for the community? So I was wondering if you can divulge, you know, what your selection criteria is for this trash contract. That's it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Nicole Blankenship. I reside on Harvard Court. I have just a quick question, so it's more maybe you can um, educate me. Would this be something that eventually we could possibly vote on as far as whether we want it or not, or even the bids? Like, do, do the residents get to then have a say? I'll answer that part of the question. Uh, to the point of today, mm -hmm. it was a request that we investigate with financials, with ability and with transparency, if someone can come in the township with a, with a price that's fair and equitable to everybody, and with some of the things we're hearing tonight, and provide single hauler trash service. It's been a request of a few subdivisions, including mine. I don't know if my members are still here that live in my community, but um, we have several communities, and you heard them speak tonight, many trash haulers are on their street, and many people don't want homeowners associations. They call on us as their elected officials to help solve their problems. So at this point in time, it was brought to us just like it was in 1989. It was brought to us in 2014 or 15. And again, it's brought up in 2022 that we should review our policy on a single hauler. Okay, so it's something that like, we as the residents wouldn't vote on. It's something that you as the elected officials would decide on. A resident will come to a township board meeting. There are several concerns in the community right now where residents come to the township board and request us to work on things. They'll either call us, the members will talk about it, we'll put it on our agenda, and we, we determine whether or not 
fiscally we should work on it. Okay. You're welcome. I know you. Hi, I'm Paul Tadonio from Community Disposal. Um, my, <laughs> uh, my partner Brian Davis and I started the company January of 2016, and it's just through basically just because of social media, we don't advertise, but just our customers recommend us to more and more people. We just keep growing. To be honest with you, the only reason I don't have a lot more in Oxford Township is because there was talk of doing a, a, a possibly going to one hauler and with my experience in Waterford, where the supervisor down there assured me they were not going to, and I went down there and got 3,300 customers in about 18 months, uh, and then they did a contract, and, and I kind of felt like I was lied to. <laughs> That's a lot of investment and a lot of time. I've got about a half a million dollars of my own money invested in just servicing what I do in this township. I'm um, here about 10% of my business. Um, and uh, uh, I do want to say, though, um, I appreciate the integrity of the board um, for, you know, to me, the, the consultant that you used, I've never liked. <laughs> um, I, I don't think he's competent. Uh, is my opinion, um, and I, um, I've seen some crackpot. He's had some crackpot kind of ideas out there for, for other townships to consider. And but he's very good at getting grant money. He's very good at uh, getting people to do it by ordinance rather than a special assessment district, which I would highly recommend if you ever pursue it, that you do it by SAD because people vote on it. They can go street by street if they want to. I used to do Commerce Township. I had 88 SADs before they rolled it all into one, and I had 8,800 together. This was 20, 30 years ago. But um, I've been in the business for 44 years. I've seen a lot. In Michigan, I don't know when they changed the public bid laws. I'm glad to see that Oxford's holding it to a higher standard. Um, but the last several communities that I've seen that have used, incidentally, the same same consultant that you used, went through the whole thing with an, an angry crowd, and then voted to do it, after all. So I was glad to see you guys do the right thing up front. I appreciate it. And um, um, I'd be glad to lend you any of my 44 years experience, because there's a lot of other ideas to save the roads. I've got, I've got one truck that weighs half as much as the rest of mine. It just a fluke. I bought it from car trucking down in in Clinton Township, and it weighs 22,000 pounds empty and 33,000 pounds loaded, about half what one of my big trucks weighs. Uh, it would take me a while to find a bunch more of them, but if that's what it took to, if you wanted lighter trucks, the technology's there. Um, it just takes, you know, people looking at all the ideas, not just the ones they're fed. So, um, I say I'm available anytime if you guys want to call. Work well past midnight every night, so um, I'm going to go back to the shop and work on trucks till everything's safe for tomorrow. And uh, but we uh, we appreciate you listening and appreciate all the people showing us your support. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> your turn. I'm Julianne Bakos. I live on uh, Deer Path Trail. It's a very busy street. And we have at least three different trash haulers servicing our subdivision on various days of the week. So on warm summer months, that's as many as nine trucks um, going down our streets. And as someone else mentioned, all those garbage trucks out on multiple days, it's not attractive. Um, so therefore, I personally like the idea of one garbage service um, traveling our streets. Uh, we have buckling curbs and broken drains. Um, that we're trying to get fixed, and so fewer trucks might help extend the life of our roads. Um, now, I do live on a two-acre lot with lots of trees, so that means I have a lot of yard waste. And I understand why residents that don't have yard waste would not want to have to pay for it. Um, however, I fear that residents with, with yard waste would simply opt out of the surface and <coughs> dump their, uh, their waste on the common areas in our na nature preserves. So. I'm not sure what the solution is, but it's just something I ask. You know, it's something that could be considered. 
I was going to ask if you had any input from our neighbors to the south, Lake Orion, but someone else mentioned. So it sounds like they have gotten a really good rate. Um, and I mean, are they satisfied with theirs? Kevin gone to a single? I don't know if you know that or not, but I know someone else answered the price is good. I, I couldn't hear that last question. Um, I just wondered if our neighbors to the south, Lake Orion, I believe they have a single trash hauler. Someone else mentioned that they have good rates. Um, do you know if they've done any surveys, if the people are happy having a single trash? In Orion? Mm -hmm. Our neighbors, um, yeah. I talk with Chris Barnett, the township supervisor, daily, and, and the topic did come up because someone made a statement that they have a problem. He said the first 30 days were rough, and I'm not putting words in his mouth. He offered he's taking his mom to the Cleveland Clinic tonight, or he would have been here. Um, but he told me the first 30 days were rough, the liaison from the one single hauler and a trustee were assigned to take every call and to handle every complaint as they came in. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir. Hi, my name's Jim Powers. I live on Seymour Lake Road. Um, first of all, I want to commend you for realizing there, were, there was an error in uh, re revisiting this. Um, <clears throat> I am passionate about my trash, um, but I'm passionate about not having trash. Um, I, I have a smaller bin that I keep in the corner of my garage inside. Uh, I put it out no sooner than every four weeks. My um, disposal service discounts my price because of that, because they don't have to pick up all the time. Um, I was always suspect about recycling, so I would collect my recycling material and I would take it down to Sacra in, D in Troy to make sure that it was actually recycled. And my suspicions were confirmed because when Sacra was shut down for COVID and I had to secure another trash disposal service, um, in talking with them, the representative confirmed my suspicion that 95% of what's picked up as recycles ends up going in the landfill because if they find one piece that doesn't qualify as being recycled that goes in that truck, it all has to go to landfill. Now, Sacra's back open. You have to do it by appointment, but they limit the communities that can do it, that can use their service, and we are not one of those. So what I'm wondering, especially since you're already engaged with a consultant, is what's the possibility of either Oxford Township themselves or other northern Oakland community municipalities creating a NACRA, okay, and having a site where People can go and, you know, recycle the material themselves. You reduce the, the road traffic because people are in their vehicles doing it. Um, yeah, the noise and everything that, is, that, that initiated this concern to begin with. Um, like I said, my rate is discounted because I don't have as much trash, but people could also save themselves money by recycling rather than having to pay, you know, their disposal service to do that. So I'm just wondering, is it possible that you guys could take a look at, at having the consultant look at the feasibility of creating something like that? Want to answer that, John? Curtis? We, in uh, the proposals that we had, we requested where the recyclables or composting would be and each of the respondents did have either their own site or they had a transfer station that would take the grass clippings or recyclables to another drop-off site. I'm not talking about uh, lawn waste. I'm talking about, you know, plastic, glass, mm -hmm. cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would think that there's property in, in Oxford Township that we could designate maybe to uh, set up a location where bins could be that we could go and recycle uh, personally ourselves. I would think that you might be able to get uh, waste haulers to help maybe contribute to the expense if they are if they're awarded the contract to be able to you know recycle the material themselves 
Maybe there's a possibility you could go to the state and try to get some of the, you know, the infrastructure money that's, that's out there. Um, but I, I'm just wondering if you guys could broaden it, maybe be a little bit more progressive in resolving the issues that brought this up to begin with in a different way. Of the three folks, in three the companies, of the three companies that responded, each one of them had a different format for their recycling. One of them stuck out in my mind just because it was, it was different. They had a recycle program that gave discounts back to the, uh, the <clears throat> homeowners. And uh, they kept track of that through their trucks and they recycled accordingly. Uh, I was very impressed with their program. Uh, I was, don't use coupons that much personally myself, but my family does. But the coupons do come around into the township. So they had quite a program. Okay, so are you saying that you aren't even open to the possibility of create, being, being able to create a public recycling center that people can take their recycling material to themselves, guaranteeing it's going to be recycled mm -hmm. rather than put in the landfill, not, you know, with them not knowing because um, it's contaminated? I mean, I mean... Uh, that's, that's kind of a hard question to answer. I don't... I don't know if this committee has got a written guarantee from those people to drop off their recyclables. Many of our independents are guilty of that. I've witnessed it myself. Somebody has two cans out for recycling. They both go in the same truck. We understand that. We can't finitely watch each and every one of them. Their reputation, as you all commend, uh, community, I'm sure they do it right. I don't know if each and every one of their drivers do it right. It all depends on the day, the time. It, it, we can't guarantee that somebody's going to put plastic in a plastic recyclable container. Okay, but uh, I, maybe I'm not explaining myself well enough, but I'm not talking about using priority GFL community. I'm talking about having a site. Have you been to soccer before? <clears throat> I've been to Mancelona, Kalkaska. They have all sites for recycling. I understand what that site is. We, we have not invested. I don't believe the committee has investigated something along that manner. Could they? Is what I, I mean, since this is open now and you've got Mr. a consultant Chair. on board, maybe, maybe you know, communicate with Sakra and find out how they're set up and see how feasible it would be for northern Oakland communities to do something like that? It's something we could consider. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Harvey Wesley. I live on Horner Drive. Um, we're we're a small rural community, and I, I think we've encouraged competition and and all the free enterprise and everything else. To go to a monopoly hauling system, I think, is wrong for the township overnight. <clears throat> I think the Gentleman with the um, uh, special assessment district type of idea is something worth considering. If you've got a community that's got a problem with excess number of trucks, work with them initially. Do it as an experiment. Build your experience up as to how do you get to a single hauler. But do it small and grow with it as the community grows. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Shirley Bolterstein. I'm from the Stony Lake Village. These are condos, and um, I haven't heard anything addressed relating to condos. For a Shirley, can I ask you to just get a little closer to the mic, okay. please? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, trash pickup or, or a one, one trash hauler would make a big difference over at the condos. <clears throat> Um, currently, we do have GFL. We don't have uh, any problems with them that I could say. Uh, our, we have 75 units. We got 38 buildings and uh, 38 duplexes in one single. We pay 1664 a unit for just the pickup of the waste. And then the, the environmental, search, uh, environmental service surcharge is $1.31. So that comes out to like $17.95. Per unit in like a, comes out to $54 a quarter. Now, if the township 
required household yard waste. We don't have household yard waste in the condos. Anything that's got to be picked up is picked up by our landscaping people. So that would be additional charge to us right off the bat. We are allowed to put our waste in black plastic garbage bags or in a trash cart of our own, not one that we have, the company says we have to use. It's the size of the trash or an and recyclable cart are both required. This would be of concern because they must be stored inside our garages, which we have a limited amount of space. So that would be a problem for us. And again, if we were required to use their carts, they charge us, would be another increase in our bill. Charges for waste removal are included in the condo association dues and paid by the management company. If the bill is sent to the condo owner, how will this be handled by the township? Also would affect our contract with the management company. How would you take care of this now? Do you have an answer? Who wants to answer? Dan, do, do you want to address the fact about contracts? Sure. So, so what the township would uh, consider is an ordinance that would provide for a single hauler that would allow for the township to negotiate the actual contract. A lot of the concerns that you've raised and others have raised today will be addressed in the contract between the township and the single hauler. So things like condos and how condos are treated can be addressed in the contract. And the RFP, although it's long, um, asks the haulers to uh, give some information with regard to these different circumstances, whether it be dumpsters, whether it be condos, um, whether it be you know snowbird uh, discounts. Those are all things that are included into the contract that ultimately is agreed to. Are we gonna be advised about what is in there at the next meeting or, or whenever you get all the bids well, back? It, you have, yeah, do you be want me? Before any ordinance is enacted, this board would have two readings. A first reading, which would be uh, philosophically May. Uh, then a second reading, taking into consideration some things that might not be looked at, would be handled at a second reading one month or two months later, depending on the amount of work that had to be done. So yes, you'd be notified your concerns would be addressed. At a meeting, at a meeting like this? Uh, well, how are a, they gonna be addressed? The reason the meeting is here tonight is in anticipation of the number of residents that do have a passion for their garbage. So um, we held it here. It does contain a lot more. I would have the fire chief throwing half of you out because we don't have that big of a township board. So at a meeting at the township board, that's where we would make that decision. Okay. If the current waste hauler, GFL, is not selected, this would cause an early termination of our, our contract with them. And the charges could run in the thousands. Will the township be absorbing these charges, or how are you going to handle this? No. Well, the answer is no, we won't. Well. Um, and, and as I said before, it's our opinion that if the waste hauler cannot provide garbage service, that that should render the contracts null and void. Now that's our opinion. I don't give legal advice to 8,000 residents. Um, and if the contra or if the hauler disagrees with that, that still remains a dispute, unfortunately, between the resident and the hauler. Are you telling me that it may have to be that I'm gonna to have to pay these thousands of dollars for early termination of my contract? It's possible, yes. Okay, well, um, yeah. if we could summarize it, we've gone over the three minute time limit. If you have more questions, no, I know I, that Clerk Wright will take them and Trustee Nold will take them. I sent you an email. You've got an email from me with all this stuff on it. Okay, then they will be addressed. Today. Yeah, but I'm quite concerned about this early termination thing. So this could be a lot of money. Thank and you. It, and money that the association should not have to be paid. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time.
Any other members of the public would like to speak? I move to close the public hearing to consider contracting with one company to provide waste disposal services to the Charter, Ch Charter Township of Oxford at 8.49 p.m. I'll second that. We have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Charles. Roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Trustee Nold. Yes. Okay. Item 8A. You're more than welcome to stay, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Scrambled eggs. We're going to spend a million bucks. <laughs> Uh, item 8A, purchase of a new fire engine. Uh, Chief Majestic and Treasurer Ferrari, I think you're going to handle this one with them? Yep, once Mayor does the background. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody good? Yeah. All right. That's what it's supposed to sound like talking into one of these, right? Uh, as you know, uh, a year ago, we went through and created a committee within the fire department to evaluate the replacement of a, a fire engine who at that time was 25 years, 26 years old. Um, and we went through the entire process of having multiple companies come in, present to us and all of that. We signed off on a contract last year uh, to replace the 1996 Freightliner fire engine. Um, at that time, we, you know, we had, I guess, uh, kind of juggled with the idea of trying to buy two at once, but then we we're like, no, we're gonna kind of, we, we have a plan that we're starting to put in place now, and we've, uh, we planned on replacing that second engine to 2002 in about three to four years. Well, the big problem is supply chain issues have come up to bite us in the rear end. Um, and so what we're doing now is we're asking to buy that second engine or at least place the order now because the delivery date is expected in three and a half to four years. <clears throat> so, to stay on our plan, we need to place that order now. If we do that, we will lock the price in. However, as, I, it, as you saw through the packet, there was a considerable increase in the price. Um, they are now uh, offering the opportunity to do a prepayment discount plan. Uh, and as I had placed in my letter to the board, I would highly recommend and would accept whatever your, your judgment is on that, but it could save us upwards of $53,000 and some change by doing the prepayment plan. Um, we did utilize the same uh, um, bid process, if you will, and using the, um, the, uh, the national bid cooperatives to maintain our best price possibility that would be afforded to the Sutphin Corporation who we would like to then uh, award this next bid to as well. It, is a, it would be a twin to the one we had already spec'd out to also save money so that it wouldn't have to create a second round of build process. Um, and that's where we're at right now. If we do that, and as you saw, there is a considerable increase from what we did just 11 months ago. And, uh, but the nice thing is, if we do this, that bid price is locked in now. Uh, the other thing that we found out from the two other companies that we had uh, dealt with last year as far as reviewing things, they are now um, adding language into their contracts uh, requiring the purchaser to take on any additional cost overrides if they should occur. And we all know that in three and a half to four years from now, there's going to be increased costs for something whether we buy it today or four years from now. So that's where we're at. You've seen our full uh, uh, request for the uh, purchase, and I would entertain any questions or concerns you may have. Uh, I asked Treasurer Ferrari today with Clerk Wright, what was the best utilization of funding to get the best capture of interest and savings on the truck so Treasurer Ferrari came up with uh, an idea. The board members working with uh, Jack and Curtis, and Chief Two, you're also in the loop on that. We could take an eternal loan from our building permit fund. Chief, uh, fill a fire department would pay them 1% interest and pay it as a balloon payment at the end. It doesn't take all the fire funds to commit them to one uh, resource in the fire engine. So in case something happens between now and three years, 
your fund balance isn't strapped. It gives you more working capital. It also, too, allows the monies to be paid in advance to save you the $53,000. And also, too, allows you to continue earning money on the money that you're saving in your account and just paying a balloon interest payment at the end. We would absolutely appreciate that uh, opportunity to take advantage of that because while we do have in our fund balance the ability to make that payment, um, it would leave us well under any kind of, uh, it put us probably right around half a million dollars in fund balance to see us through the rest of the year. And last year alone with the age of our ambulances and the current fire engines, we spent upwards of uh, uh, about 140 to $160,000 in just repairs and maintenance last year. And we still got quite a bit of the year to go. So yeah, that would that would be a wonderful thing for us for sure. Supervisor Curtis and Clerk Wright and I talked about it. We don't want to infringe on your working capital. We don't know what could happen. Maybe defibrillators go bad in two years. Well, we we're want all, you to have the working capital. We're already there for ventilators, so you know or, that would well, whatever that, fire safety right? may need. Yes, sir. We want you to be saying, "God, we can't buy that." We'd rather do it internally. Keep your working capital for things we don't see. So I move to approve the purchase of one Sutphin Custom Heavy Duty G9 Pumper Complete and deliver to the Oxford Fire Department and per the prepayment discount options letter provided by Sutphin Corporation dated April 4th, 2023, approved prepayment option four with a discount of 53,635.69, which all purchase price of 816-132.31. This 816-132.31 purchase price is to be paid with a loan from the Oxford Township Building Department Fund to the Oxford Fire Department. The Oxford Fire Department will be charged a 1.00% interest rate, being on the loan date, be paid back in a one balloon payment three years after the loan date or later, depending upon the actual arrival of the new fire engine. The final payment is estimated to be 840.979 with 816,132.31 being paid in principal and 24,846.69 being paid in interest. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Item 8B, fire station number three, well bids. Uh, who wants to take that on? I think uh, I think Trustee Knoll had something to start on it, and I believe Mr. Sharp will be addressing uh, any questions Trustee on Noel. it. Trustee Knoll was going to introduce the two of you <laughs> as part of the committee because I'm part of the committee. So there you go. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Township Board. Um, as you're aware, we are continuing to progress up on Fire Station Number Three, which is up on Lapeer Road, just a little bit north of the industrial area there. Um, phase one was completed with all the grading activities out there. This is phase two of the project. Uh, we went out to drill a fire suppression well, essentially, solely for the <coughs> fire department's use, the drilling of a well so that they can fill vehicles to better, uh, better service the people of the northern portion of the community. Um, I was before you last month, we had taken uh, public bids and uh, the previous bidder after you had approved, that was Berkmeyer, um, they had came to us with an email and said, oh, guess what, we missed something. So basically we said, okay, your, your bid is no, longer, uh, is no longer good for us. So we went to the second lowest qualified bidder, which is CE Lehman Company. Um, so I guess we are asking for you to rescind your motion of last month's meeting that was approving an award of contract to uh, Berkmeyer Well Drilling and then to uh, to make a new motion for C.E. Lehman for a not to an exceed amount of $48,000 to drill this fire suppression well. This Mr. Mr. Supervisor, I move to rescind the motion approved at the March 8th, 2023 Oxford Township Board of Trustees meeting to award the Oxford Fire Station Number 3 Fire Protection Well Bid to Ed Berkmeyer Well Drilling at the bid price of $41,794. And now to award the Oxford Fire Station Number Three Fire Protection Well Bid to C.E. Lehman for the amount not to exceed forty-eight thousand dollars, and to be determined from which fund the forty thousand 
dollars amount will be paid. I'll second that for discussion. Okay, I have a motion by Trustee Nold, a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Treasurer Ferrari, your question? Was the original purchase made on ARPA funds? The, the original 41794 was part of ARPA funds, yes. Okay, so it'll continue going along that process. We are going to pursue the ARPA funds for this 48000 okay. <clears throat> okay, no problem. Clerk Wright. Yeah, considering the, the bid is accepted and moving forward, when will the project start? Yeah, the, we received an email uh, that if it were, were to be awarded, it would be about four to six weeks before the project would begin. They have to apply for a permit uh, from the health department to drill the well and then, you know, start ordering materials and so forth. So around four to six weeks, they've told us. Any other questions? Okay. Um, roll call. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. And Trustee Colvin. Yes. <coughs> okay. Item Thank nine. Oh. Jack. oh. First of all, thank you for uh, for uh, taking taking into consideration this bid for this new fire engine. Again, it, it's replacing a twenty. This one will be replacing an engine that, at that time when it comes in, will be going on twenty six years old. So we've we definitely are putting in our uh, we're getting our best use out of what we do. Uh, another thing that was asked of me was to speak. <sighs> I'll do it. Um... What? Firefighter Goldie's condition has diminished. He is now in hospice care at Beaumont Hospital. And what the, the I, I don't have the name in front of me. Morning. Heart to heart. Heart to heart. Uh, as you are aware, uh, Firefighter Goldie uh, suffered brain cancer from... Uh, carcinogens and fires, and his uh, prognosis is terminal, and he doesn't have long to live. He is taking visitors. He welcomes visitors, and if anybody cares to, please visit. Send us a note. Whatever. That would be great. Thank you. All right. Uh, number nine, Sharp Engineering Report. Are there any questions for Mr. Sharp in the report that's in your package? Seeing none. Number 10, Unfinished Business. Paint, formerly known as Squaw, Lake Canal Special Assessment District, request resolution number two. Clerk Wright. This is a process for establishing a special assessment district. In this case, it's for aquatic weed removal or actually just a treatment that won't completely remove them. But there's a four-step process in establishing the SAD. This is step number two. And what the step does is accepts the, the SAD process and also authorizes the supervisor to create the special assessment role. After this meeting, the role will be presented back to the Township Board in May. And then at that time, a public hearing will be set for June. And after that public hearing is completed, then the SAD will be voted on for approval. So with that, I will move to approve resolution number two to establish the Paint Lake Canal Special Assessment District as presented. I'll second that. I have a, a motion by Clerk Wright, a second by Trustee Charles. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Trustee Charles. Yes. Oh, I get to go now. Item 10B, Oakland County 2023 Gravel <clears throat> Road Program Cost Participation Agreement. Um, board members, our 2023 it's been recommended we take our tri-party funds and continue to address gravel roads in Oxford Township identified by the Road Commission of Oakland County and citizen input. Uh, a meeting will be held in early May uh, to prioritize the roads, 
but uh, I need uh, approval to move forward with the cost participation. I move to approve the cost participation agreement between the Board of County Road Commissioners of the County of Oakland and the Charter Township of Oxford for the 2023 Gravel Road Program as presented. Authorize Supervisor Jack Curtis to sign the agreement on behalf of the Charter Township of Oxford. Second. I have a motion by <coughs> Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Nold. Yes. Clerk Wright, yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. And Trustee Colvin. Yes. Okay. Uh, board members, item 11A, new business. Carlisle Wartman Associates Agreement for Consulting Services. Carlisle Wartman has been operating under a contract that was, how old was it, Curtis? 2006 or seven. 2006 or seven. It was, it was out. So we're, we're almost longer than the engineer. Uh, we have uh, a new contract in front of you stating their retainer, what's done in their retainer, and the hourly wages that they're charged for a principal and an hourly wage that's uh, charged for an associate working for the township. So if there are no questions, I would entertain a motion. Jack, just enjoy. you're pretty happy with their services still? Yes. Okay, just want to check. I move to approve the agreement for consulting services between the Charter Township of Oxford and Carlisle Wartman Associates, Inc. As presented, authorized Supervisor Jack Curtis and Clerk Curtis <coughs> W. Wright to sign the agreement on behalf of the Charter Township of Oxford. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Nold. Uh, are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. And Trustee Colvin. Yes. Uh, item 11B under new business. Ordinance Review Committee request for funding. Trustee Nold. With the approval of the Carlisle Wartman Associates contract, we can now move forward with our, our ORC, which is the Ordinance Review Committee uh, action <coughs> items. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to move to approve the amount not to exceed $13,680 payable to Carlisle Wartman Associates, Inc. to work with the Oxford Township Ordinance Review Committee to draft and adopt zoning ordinances, amendments for the following identified priority groups, one, items. Signage, lighting, landscaping standards, zoning map maintenance, animal de definitions, zoning amendments criteria, state licensing residential uses, and sound standards. This $13,080. Nope, $680. Excuse me. $13,680 amount to be expended to the general fund account 101701801000 planner and professional services. I will second that. I have a motion by Trustee Nold, a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Are there any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Item 11C, uh, board members, uh, a community resident asked us to do uh, request a speed study on M24 uh, between Ray Road and the village limits or street of Harriet um, through a resolution to the Michigan Department of Transportation. We are allowed a speed study to be performed at our request. What I'm asking tonight is to approve the resolution to request the Michigan Department of Transportation to conduct a speed study. I move to approve the resolution to request the Michigan Department of Transportation to conduct a speed study on Lapeer Road, M24 Highway, from Ray Road in Oxford Township, Oakland County, to Harriet Street. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Colvin. Are there any questions? 
Seeing none, roll call. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Okay, item 11D, CDBG for Senior Services, Meals on Wheels. Board members for our annual Senior Services for CDBG funds for 2023, we agreed to allocate those funds to help pay for a contracted person for our Meals on Wheels program. And we've got the bid back from uh, uh, Rochester OPC. And it's for that amount, they will have to provide timesheets to verify the uh, money's being reimbursed. I make a motion that the Oxford Township Board of Trustees agrees to waive its resolution to solicit bids and awards a senior services contract for 2022 Community Development Block Grant Funds, CDBG, in the amount of 5,352 to Rochester Older Persons Commission, OPC, and to authorize the CDBG coordinator, Joseph G. Ferrari, to sign the applicable contract and or documents. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari a second by Trustee Nold. Uh, for the members of the community, I don't know if you heard that or not, the acronym CDBG is thrown out a lot. Where's that money come from, Treasurer Ferrari? It comes from the federal government, funnel through Oakland County. Thank you. Community Development Block Grant. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Nold. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Okay. Item 11E. 2023 West Now Virus Prevention Program. Treasurer Ferrari. Uh, board members, once again, Oakland County is giving us some funding to help in the prevention of West Nile virus. And as you know, in years past, we've given out mosquito dunks to our residents that come in to help with the low-lying areas and the ditching areas. I'd like to continue doing that again. So I'll make a motion to purchase 65 cases of mosquito dunks, 12 by two packs at 4584 per case for a total of 2,979.60, include shipping, and one case with natural XRT tablets for $968, including shipping. The total project expenditure is 3,947.60 with 3,912.38 coming from the Oakland County West Nile Virus Prevention Grant. Account number 101-000-072.006 and 35-22 coming from the Oxford Township General Fund. Account number 101-531-880.001. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer <coughs> Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Uh, well, quick question. So, you're, Joe, you're going to increase the number of uh, boxes that you're yep. ordering. Is that right? Because no, yep. last year you ran out. Very quickly. Yeah, yeah, we're getting we're getting more. Hopefully, this will do it. Again, well, last year there was again was these shortage. funds are allocated through the county, and the amount that we make up and the difference from the general fund, Joe, is thirty five dollars. Thirty five dollars. Purchase more, but I think we can, we want to use the grant money. Yeah. Okay. We're expending their grant monies. All those. Uh, yes, sir. Are you going to put a limit on how many people can pick up residents? Yep. Yeah, we usually put a limit on that to start with. Do you know what that is? So Not the, yet, but we're going to take a look okay. at it. A lot of times we get folks coming from HOAs. So if they got a bunch of low-lying ditching areas, I give them maybe 10. All right. Whereas it's just a resident, I'll give them six. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright. <coughs> yes. And Trustee Knoll. Yes. I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution authorizing the West Nile virus fund expense reimbursement request as presented. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Clerk Wright. Any questions? Roll call. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Clerk Wright, yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. And Trustee Charles. Yes. Uh, Item 12, we had no items removed from the consent agenda. Item 13, uh, this is an opportunity for any members of the public that would like to speak. We welcome you to come up and speak at this time. Uh, good evening, my name is Charles Devlin. I spoke earlier. Uh, I'm very disappointed in these allegations and unfounded rumors of people getting money or being on the take to do this trash hauler thing. I don't necessarily agree with you guys all the time, 
but I do recognize you guys are public servants. You don't need people besmirching your reputations. And I just, I, I wish some of these people would just think twice before they throw this crap out. Uh, again, I don't agree with you guys all the time, but I do appreciate the work you do. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Appreciate yes, sir. Yeah. Jay Havener, uh, Coates Road, uh, between Drainer and uh, uh, Seymour Lake. I, I've been having difficulty getting a hold of anybody with a Ro uh, Oakland County Road Commission. We got a ditching problem uh, where the roadbed is below the shoulder of the road and the water doesn't get in can't get into the dish so it pools a lot of times at the foot of my driveway and creates havoc with the roadbed and I've tried a dozen times to go through Oakland County Road Commission uh, I don't you know they'll say well we'll get the supervisor out there but I don't even know who the supervisor is to ask for district 3 so we normally can't comment during public. Yeah. Call me tomorrow. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Seeing none, Board of Trustees comments. We'll start with Catherine Colvin, <laughs> Trustee Colvin. Okay. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out and letting us know how, what they think um, and participating in the community. We appreciate that. Um, just another thought, anybody that has uh, nothing going on, April 22nd, between noon and 4, the DDA is organizing uh, some cleanup in the village, so show up at Centennial Park, come for 10 minutes, come for four hours, let's help clean up our community. That's all. Thanks. Am I next on the hip Trustee right? Trustee Charles. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, commend our supervisor for pulling that off the agenda after you found out there were some errors in the process. Uh, secondly, to commend you again for the way you handled some of the unnecessary and unfair attacks, as the gentleman previously stated. I think that was unnecessary, to say the least. Um, and then third, third point, I know myself there was some frustration trying to get some information about the uh, single hauler system here. I would called our consultant one time and I never had the courtesy of a response from him. So I can see why there's frustration from the community. And I did call him, left my name, left my number, said as a township trustee, never had the courtesy of a return phone call. Thank you. Treasurer Ferrari? I agree with what Catherine Rod have said. I appreciate everybody coming out and talking to us about this. But I was thinking about some of the comments that were made. This committee is going back to the drawing board. We may not want to consider a one-size-fits-all approach. We want to look at the SAD type of thing. I, just kind of, I kind of put the two and two together with a Paint Creek Lake, where that was resident-driven, where they said, we want we control on our lake. Here's our signatures. We get over 50%, let's do it. We may want to do that in some of our areas where they say, we want one hauler. Those that don't have, like, I'm in Waterstone. I had it both ways. I was in uh, Clear Lake, where it was, you had your own hauler. Now I'm in Hometown Village, where we have community. So I've seen it both ways. But maybe that's the way to go, those that may want a hauler for their area, whether it's Oxford Woods, Red Barn, may get enough people on the petition, 51%, present to Clerk Wright, go that route, just like we're doing on weed control. That might be something the committee may want to dis discuss. That's all my comments. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Nold. I want to thank the board for tonight. I am part of the waste hauler, single waste hauler committee. I have seven pages of notes. I have taken uh, copious notes tonight. I understand the concept with the SAD. I've worked with those personally before. So we have a lot to look at as far as the committee to go back and to see where we're going to start. But thank you for coming in. And those of you who are kind, cordial, and polite, thank you. Clerk Wright. Yeah. Uh, just a commendation to you, Supervisor Curtis, for uh, manning the, the chairmanship of, of a meeting like this. I've personally sat through this as well in different different issues, and it's it's not easy to try to try to address people because there's a lot of emotion in the room, trying trying to express their points of frustration, satisfaction, and, and other items that are going through their minds. So um, it's just it's not an easy situation. We knew that coming into this meeting, 
uh, it was well prepared for us to, to try to accommodate our residents. Uh, thank you to uh, my deputy Susan McCullough, Daniel Smith, CJ Karnacki, all that really put a lot of time into getting us to this point to try to present information to you. Thank you to uh, Lake Point Church for hosting this facility. They've been upstanding residents of this community for us as well. Um, also, just one thing that ran through my mind as well is in the past, and Treasurer Ferrari can correct me if I'm wrong, but we were looking to get the bylaws of these homeowners associations, if you have them, if you could supply those to the township. I know that a lot of people's left by now, but um, if that word could be passed, um, that's something that we know what you're operating under, so it would assist us to know what we can do maybe to assist you in some of the situations you may, may have that, that come in, into play. So, um, again, um, as one of the committee members as well on this trash hauler uh, um, exercise, I'll call it that, um, uh, we will do some thorough investigating research on the issues that were brought forward. As Trustee Nold indicated, several comments were, were put forth, but um, we need to know where we're going and how we're going to get there. And I'll just caveat that if we get there. Those are my comments. Thank you. Well, thank you. I, my comments, number one, thank you, Lake Point Church. I think, Joel, you're still back there. Thank you very much for setting this all up for us working with OCTV to white, uh, <clears throat> put us on Wi-Fi and stream the meeting. <clears throat> Secondly, you heard Catherine talk about the DDA having a village cleanup. The school also does a community in action, if you will, helping residents with handicaps, uh, impairments, uh, lack of funding, tools to do the jobs around their house. The school kids get together and they take troops over there and clean yards up, rake leaves, cut vines, that kind of stuff. That activity is sponsored by the school. Secondly, thank you all for staying here. As you saw, the interest of the people is their one topic. This board works on hundreds of topics. We just don't dream them up. They're brought to us by citizens. If I told you how many times I've gone out with the road commission supervisor and handled problems, nine o'clock at night I get a call. We got a washout on Delano Road. We got the guy out there and, and, and the resident, how did that happen? First you file a complaint with the road commission and if that doesn't happen, you call me, I get with them, we go out there and we address it. We had some ladies here tonight that wanted a speed study done on a gravel road. Fortunately, my attendance at some of the road commission meetings, when I can't be on the, the waste hauler committee or the safety path committee or the DDA, I'm at the road commission and we found mm -hmm. some money. So it's, what, it, it, it's this board works for you. Our phone numbers, our bios were all presented, but it's easy to make accusations and then run out of the room. Okay, we're, we're here. We're not, we're not lying, cheating, and stealing. It's your money, millions of dollars. Before we spend a dime of the county's money, the state money, or our local township money, all, well, seven, one's not here tonight, members of this board have reviewed the packet, which goes out on Friday. They have three days to ask any questions and get familiar with the packet, and we bring it in front of the board. Now, do we act fast? No, it's government. Ms. Keynes, I'm gonna throw you under the bus. When did you ask for this speed study? Last year. By the time the state listens to us and we pound on them, this board has to approve a resolution. Now we have to send it to the state. We only do what's asked of us and it's transparent. I got penny candy on my desk, not caviar in my car. Nobody up here intentionally misspends our money. We have auditors that come through here and prove every year that our funds are monitored closely. Treasurer Ferrari, myself, and Curtis worked today to save $30,000 in two years for the fire department. And 
they'll make money in interest-bearing accounts on their funds. We're not here to spend your money. We're here to spend your money wisely. And it's just not me. It's just not Rod. It's all of us knowing what the problem, concern is, the expenditure, where it's coming from, how much we have. Thank you for staying. We work for you. Call us. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Charles. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.